It's 2 p.m. Detroit, and you know what that means. Detroit media icon Ryan Armani, University of Michigan great Braylon Edwards, and of course, Maz are about to take over on Woodward Sports. Every day, 2 to 4 p.m., it's the best Detroit sports talk on Detroit's best sports network. Woodward Sports. Hey, let's go. Tuesday show, April 16th, 2024. Ermani and Edwards with Mass Woodward Sports Network, woodwardsports.com, fox2detroit.com, the Fox local app if you are watching live. If you're watching on YouTube, a part of the over 63,000 subscribers on this platform, we say hello to you. Hit that like button, subscribe to Woodward Sports. Braylon Edwards, good afternoon to you, my friend. Don't know how to respond. No, I'm just joking with you, man. Uh, Feeling good. You know, the weather is holding up. It's still been nice. Uh, I think it started this weekend and it's going good. The Red Wings, we'll, we'll get into, gave us a reason to be a little excited. So uh, I'm feeling good. I think we're getting closer to the draft. It's starting to heat up downtown. Events starting to happen. Uh, yeah, man, I'm feeling good. Time has away. How about yourself? I'm doing all right myself. That was a fun night last night. It really was. Uh, once the Red Wings were down 4-1, to one, I'm like, oh, it's, it's over. over. Then a second later, it was 4-2, to two, and I'm like, okay. Maybe. And then I just kept hanging in there. The second period ended, I put on the Tigers. Shut out. One nothing. <laughs> they couldn't get a run by. Okay. I slick it, put it right back. 19 minutes to go in the game, and the Red Wings owned the third period, and they owned overtime. And congrats to those guys. They really put on a show. I, I never was... I don't remember the last time I was that excited for a hockey game. Let me tell you. Let okay. me paint a picture for you uh, for a second. So it was, I usually help put the kids down at about 8.30, okay? Last night, I was watching the game, and it was just uh, an incredible experience to watch Red Wings hockey like that. 4-1, you're thinking, you know what, this thing's over. 4-2, they get it back quickly. Okay. Okay. Two, down two, they can, uh, they can make something happen. We go up at 9 o'clock, put the kids down at 9 o'clock, and my little guy, Lukey, Likes to read. Lucas Raymond? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, man. not him. But my little guy, Luke, likes to read uh, a book. And I'll lay with him and read a book. Well, it's 4-3 now, okay? Little Lukey is reading a book. I've got my phone on silent, okay? I've got my phone on silent. Luke is reading, and I've got the phone up like this. Yeah. 4-4 four, four, pops. They score 4-4. Four, four. I jump out of bed and I say, Luke, dad's got to go. <laughs> He's like, what? I run downstairs. I put the TV on, watch the end of regulation. And then all of a sudden, overtime, 3-3. Three, three. I don't think I took a breath. The entire time. I was yeah. standing. It was, I was standing. Yeah, I was standing in was front standing. of the TV. Yeah. I, was I don't think I took a breath the entire time. You know, and it's crazy. We were talking about yesterday, <laughs> just kind of the, the roller coaster that the Wings have taken us on from being in the playoffs to going on seven to having it in front of them to losing. You know, so you, you get tired of just like, oh, my God. Like, you want to detach yourself. But we haven't had this type of experience, this type of feeling outside of the Lions with the other three franchises mm -hmm. in so long, man. Like, I, I got... I got drugged back into it as well, man, and I'm happy they won. They're showing resilience. We had D Mac in here a second ago. Just the resiliency, I think they've shown. Look, we keep talking about the 0 7. We know Dylan Larkin was hurt, their best player. Uh, you're pissed at the way in which they went about the last five, I would say, a week or so. But to get that win last night, to get the win against Toronto in overtime, to bring us back on the edge, now we hope the Caps lose. Like, I'm not going to lie, Ryan and Mike, it's been very excited. And I don't think we've been ex this excited, Maz, tell me if I'm wrong, since the Lions almost made the playoffs in 2022. Man, it's great. I'm so happy. I like, I'm looking forward to tonight's game. Sure. I don't remember the last hockey game I was looking forward to. I don't. And I'll I be honest with you. I don't. And are they going to do it? Then they need some help. So, Pete, you could put up the playoff probabilities here. This is what needs to happen, folks. The Red Wings need to win. They need two points. And then they have to hope Washington loses to Philadelphia, mostly in regulation Doesn't time. matter, but, yeah, just lose. Lose. If they lose, the Red Wings will jump them. Regulation or in overtime. Correct. I just want it, I just want it over yeah. in regulation. Okay. So it's simple. Red Wings win. 
Capitals lose. Philly still has something something to play for because if they beat Washington and then something happens, Red Wings lose, Pittsburgh loses, they get in. All four all four teams are playing at the same time, which Ryan, is great. Ryan, let me ask you this. You know, we talk about the Capitals, and it seems like every time the Capitals need to make something happen, they've made it happen in the playoffs. But they've got to be exhausted too because they had a, a similar situation with the Red Wings where they kind of folded down the stretch, and now they're fighting tooth and nail. They had to beat the Red Wings and beat this team. Like, do they even have enough to win this game? Like, that's what, in my mind, I don't think the Caps have anything left. I don't want to bank on that. I want to bank on the Red Wings just going out there and handling business, but – I don't think the Caps have anything left, man. And I think I think we, they got to be exhausted. Well, Caps for sure, but the Red Wings too. You know, I mean, you go on momentum alone, yeah. right, tonight. That, like, I woke up this morning and I was exhausted from watching <laughs> that game. And it was so fun. And you forget, you know, the Red Wings haven't made the playoffs since 2014. They lost in the first round. Uh, so you've got 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And here we are in 2024. You've gone uh, this long now since 2016 without making the playoffs. Last night was the first ever playoff game at Little Caesars Arena. Yep. And, and I know it was a regular season game, yeah. but that was a win and you're still alive, a lose, and you're done. And they were down 4-1. How many times in the course of an NHL season is a team down by one goal and they pull the goalie and ultimately score? I don't know the stats on it, yeah. but I would say 99 times out of 100, what would happen is an empty net goal. I don't know about that high. <laughs> but, but it's high. I, I'm it's just high. trying to make right. a point. I'm right, just right. trying to make a point. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Right? It is... A hundred times more likely, I would say, that an empty net goal is scored than actually the game tying goal is scored. It's a power play almost. Yeah, so to have that happen last night and to see the crowd at Little Caesars Arena, we talk about moments for buildings. You know, Ford Field, for 20-plus seasons, had basically no team moments. Sure, you had Calvin Johnson and uh, all yeah. the all individual, the individual moments. moments yeah. But nothing that you could celebrate for the Detroit Lions. No big playoff games. No big championship type games. And then, all of a sudden, now, Ford Field is one of the great home field advantages in the NFL, I would say. Not to uh, mention, with, their, fir- their first one was against the guy they got rid of, essentially. A- Matt absolutely. Matt Stafford, the Rams. All that crowd noise. And now you saw what LCA could be. Yeah. Right? Was it last night an example of what Little Caesars Arena could be when they drew it up? How many people left at 4-1? I don't know too many because right away it became yeah. 4-2. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. like it was 4-1 for 10 minutes. It was 4-1, and then a minute later it was 4-2, and you get a chip and a chair, and you got a chance. You know yeah. what I mean? Maz, let me ask you this. You got here in Detroit right around the time the Detroit Red Wings were about to start popping, about oh, yeah. to start really taking off. So I imagine, how was it at first in the Red Wings and Cobo Hall, excuse me, at Joe Lewis, oh. how was it at first compared to like now? Is it similar energy in terms of 93, 94, oh, not yet. this energy now? So we're not, not there yet. yet. Not there yet. Okay. Man. But then again, I have not been in Little Caesars Arena last night. Was How was it there. last night? What was the, what I, I was wasn't the there last night. Oh, you on were TV. Not. On okay. TV, it sounded great. Sounded we'll, loud. We'll have Ken Daniels on from Mon- Montreal here in a couple of minutes. He could tell us how loud it was. Mm-hmm. He was on his A game. He was great. Ken Cal on the radio was fantastic. Mickey in the booth. It, it's just great, man. It, it, I spent fantastic. probably 30 minutes of my morning this morning. You know, I wake up at 4.30. Right. right? You're right? watching okay. the highlights. And... um. But I was watching the highlights. But it wasn't that I was watching the highlights. I was listening to the calls. Yes. Let me tell you, I was going back and forth between Ken Daniels and Ken Cal. It is you. you there is no favorite. Like no. you, it's like picking a kid. Which kid do you like it's better? The Kens. You you yeah. ki- like it's just the Dan, they are the Kens. so. We are so blessed in this city yeah. to have the play by play teams that we have true you know true. ken cal ken daniels dan dickerson dan, dan miller, miller. Yeah. you know what i mean hell blaha and champion i mean for for a sad sack pistons team yeah. which oh we'll get to them in a minute oh, but let's God. enjoy ourselves uh yeah. for a little bit but ken cal and ken daniels are freaking 
I don't even know what category to put them in. They are so good at what they do, and they are complimented by their analysts so well. Mickey Bob Redman on the TV and yep. Paul Woods on the radio. Bob My Woodsy. goodness. Can I add it to this? I think it's an attribute, Ryan. Tell me I'm wrong, Maz. It's the we're a major sports town. It's just the fact that the outside world doesn't know. We have championships everywhere except the Detroit Lions. And I think we've been that way for a very long time. So I think we still have the announcers. We still have the analysts that still give that energy because they remember the good old days. They remember what the Red Wings stand for and they remember what the Tigers stand for. So I think it's because of the city that we are in terms of being a championship town, whether people remember or not. That's why we have that type of energy with our type of personalities because they also remember what we used to be champions. It's such a great point you make too, Braylon, because you can't help but watch that game last night and not just immediately go back to what this city is like yeah. uh, during a time of a Red Wing Stanley Cup playoff run. And again, if you make the Stanley Cup playoffs, I don't care how you got in, you have a chance a shot. at the Stanley Cup. It's just the way it works out. And I don't care what anybody's, oh, the Red Wings don't have any goalies, or this is the, you get in that tournament. And I know the the New York Rangers uh, won the President's Trophy last night, and they will have the number one seed, and they will get uh, either Washington, Detroit, Pittsburgh, or Philadelphia. Whoever gets that final playoff berth in the Eastern Conference. They don't is, want us. Well, look. My point in saying that is you can't watch last night and just not look back on two decades plus of great Red Wings hockey going for a Stanley Cup championship. Just can't happen. I was over trying to look at the AFCs that had advanced because, you know, Ryan Mazin and I have talked about this at nauseum a little bit over the last couple of years. You get in like you're saying, you got a shot in NHL. Now, how many times, Mass, have you seen over the past couple of years where the number one seed gets smacked? Austin Whether and Florida. What, 100%. Boom, boom. The Bruins smack. Florida Panthers smack. And you, get a, you guys get a chance. So when you get into the dance that is the NHL, which are the most electric playoffs, by the way, you can argue me anything else. NFL you have to take out because it's the NFL. But NHL uh, playoffs are amazing. And if you get in, you got a real shot. Florida and Boston, you're talking about, Ryan, within the last three years, those teams yes. got beat as the number one seed and winners of the President's Trophy, President's Cup, excuse I'm me. I'm telling you, I told my wife last night, this team, if they get in, the Red Wings, they're going to be trouble in the first round. And they, they just absolutely will. How are you not going to be ready to play a playoff game after, trying, after getting in the way they do, if they do get in tonight? Look out, man. I bet you the Rangers I – I don't think the Rangers want them. Did the Red Wings find that guy last night too? Yeah. Is, is Lucas Raymond, who scored goals 30 and 31 on the year, is he that next guy? We talk about, you know, the Red Wings and, and having the ability to get a star. You need a star. And how Lucas Raymond has been helped by having a guy like Patrick Kane in that dressing room as well – I think is something that cannot be understated. It is for Lucas Raymond to go to work every day and see how a guy like Patrick Kane approaches the game, shows up every day, and does the job. Braylon, I find that to be um, an yeah. understated point uh, for any professional sports league that has a budding star, but Lucas Raymond is that star. Yeah, 100%. You wanted to see Lucas Raymond take that jump. His rookie year, you're talking about three years ago, he had 23 goals. It looked like he was going to be the guy, like he was moving into the next flight, but he doesn't have any help year two in terms of guys that can help him, that mentorship that you speak on. He had 17 goals, kind of a down year. Now here you are. Ryan Amani, in the last 17 games, he's had 14 goals. Not assists, not points. He's had 14 goals. He's putting the puck in the net. He's playing tremendous Hockey, he's turning into the guy that we thought he could be at the end of season one. But you bring up a good point. It's that mentorship. It's having those leaders that have been around, Patrick Kane around, having to bring it around. You got guys like Patrick Kane that have not only won championships but had, had a Hall of Fame career, if you will. You add to different guys' value. Guys can watch you. They can see how a pro really conducts himself. When LaDainian Tomlinson came to the New York Jets when I was there, I just looked at things differently. You're talking about a guy that already at that point was going to be in the Hall of Fame I was able to take notes. I was able to watch how he approached practice, how he approached taking care of his body, how he approached taking notes and meeting it. What did he do in practice and how we led? So 
when you get guys that have been there before, guys that are on a different precipice, sometimes the young guys can sit back and watch and say, oh, this is how you do it. This is how you go about it. And I think that's what's starting to happen with Lucas Raymond. Hey, to bring it hot again, starting yep. to get hot again. Gets the goal, hits two posts in overtime. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm like, two of them. Hey, you know what happens in hockey. Yeah. You hit two posts. You you control the, the pace. It goes the other way. Yeah. You know what? I think we got Ken Daniels right now live from Montreal. Ken Daniels, television play-by-play voice of the Detroit Red Wings on Bally Sports Detroit in Montreal tonight for the call of the final regular season game. Ken, how are you, my friend? Anxious. You? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm telling you, Ken. And first of all, before tonight, I just I, I have to say thank you. I spent 30 minutes this morning going back and listening to these calls again. It just makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. It was fun to be in a situation like that again. How much fun was it for you as a broadcaster? It wasn't until JT Comfer got the second goal in the second period to make it four to two. It wasn't a lot of fun, <laughs> but uh, at that point. Yeah. At that point, yeah, you just uh, live in the moment. Those are calls when you leave the building, and I happened to walk out with Steve Eisenman leaving, leaving last night when I left the gondola as we headed to the airport, and I saw Steve, and we're walking out, and he said, well, how did it sound? And I said, I have no idea. I don't even know what the hell I said. <laughs> so you, <laughs> you're in the moment. You're living it. You're trying to rise above the crowd, and that's why, you know, when they score – a goal on the road, although even in, in Toronto, uh, they had plenty of fans there. You just try to meet the crowd or rise above it, but it was deafening at Little Caesars. And that's what I think I was most happy about, just the crowd, the enjoyment, the anticipation, and the players. And it's such a tight-knit group. Um, it was uh, just wonderful to be a part of it. So so very, very exciting, and you just try not to ruin the moment. Ken, you talk about the crowd and the fans at Little, Caesar, uh, Little Caesars Arena. Maz was saying how he was standing up in front of his television <laughs> watching the end of the game i was standing up in front of my television my wife was like get away like back away yeah. you know i mean you can't breathe yeah. in these situations Ooh. to be able to feel that again it's just you just want more of it um how you use the word anxious how anxious are you for tonight what is left in the tank do you believe for the red wings players after last night oh i think lots i i think they're thriving on it and and that's why you know when when steve a year ago said Ottawa and Buffalo is ahead in the rebuild, and he tried to uh, mitigate that by signing the veteran players that he did. Already had some, obviously. But then you add JT Copper, who comes up with huge goals. You already had David Braun, and then you add Patrick Kane. Oh my goodness, he's got seven game winners to lead the team, and he's only playing in his 50th game of the season. Even that's remarkable when you think what Patrick did. So I know the guys look around that room, and, and if you're a younger player and you're Lucas Raymond or Mo Sider, and you look up and you see Patrick Kane and Comfer and Dylan Larkin, who's just driving this team. I mean, they went 4-10 and 10 without Dylan and the, and, the, and the losing streak that they hit. They shouldn't even be in this position, really, right. because they had it locked up. But injuries happen. They're part of the game, and they're not that deep in terms of an elite center who can feed his wingers. And that's why Dylan Larkin's, Larkin's absence becomes more key to the group. They're a good team, not a great team. They've got depth, but not that elite depth. So I think those young guys look in that room and see the veteran guys who are there who can calm it down. Um, and David Perron's a big voice in the room and Kane. So I think they're fine. I think they got a lot left in the tank. And obviously it depends how James Reimer comes through tonight. He's done it before. He's uh, done it in Toronto, went into Calgary, shut him out, not playing a lot. So you just hope he comes up with a big game tonight. It still always comes down to goaltending. I believe I believe that Keith Primo's kid, Caden, is playing Golden Knight for Montreal. Mm. And I'm thinking, isn't that something? You got Lucas Raymond, and we're going to mention this off the top of the broadcast, Lucas Raymond, who got taken fourth. That's the highest draft pick the Red Wings have had since Keith Primo's daddy. Wow. wow. Was taken at number three. Wow. And now his kid's playing Golden Knight. So I think that's pretty cool. There are always stories within the game, but even tonight, you just stick to the game. Plenty of stories, and hopefully the Red Wings write a great one. Ken, Brother Edwards here. I hope you heard what we said before you got on, man. We're very lucky in the city of Detroit to have you, Ken Calvert, as well as Dan Miller and Dan Dickerson, man. We're just a very blessed fan base, sports city. Um, long, long, long time fan of the Detroit Wet Rings. Excited, you know, the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows. But here they are. They got you back on the edge of your seats. They can get in 100%. We were just talking about Florida losing a couple years ago as the number one seed. We were talking about the Bruins losing as the number one seed. The Red Wings get in. They're starting to play that type of hockey that we saw 
well, I'll say five weeks ago, do they really have a chance once they get in? Because I'm starting to like what I'm seeing, whether it's the Canadians or not. Well, I like the way you think. <laughs> I, I, I'm putting it I, out there, Ken. Let, let's, let's win a game against the President's Trophy champion New York Rangers, okay? They'll yeah. likely start in New York on Sunday uh, is the way that that would go because the Knicks play in New York on Saturday afternoon. So let's get there first. Let's hope it's not just one point tonight and a, and a Washington loss, and then you're waiting on Pittsburgh and the Islanders tomorrow because the Islanders, without Noah Dobson, they're going to rest some players, and Pittsburgh then would still be alive. And you know what my biggest fear is tonight? And, yeah, you try to get in, and I'm not even looking ahead to what they can or can't do. And you know what? If a goalie gets hot, sure, maybe you, you take a series somewhere, and that's what it boils down to. My biggest fear tonight is that uh, the Red Wings are winning. Uh, it's not a fear. It's a great thing. If the Red Wings are winning uh, over Montreal and you've got the Philadelphia Flyers who need a regulation win against Washington, whom the Red Wings need to lose tonight, the Red Wings need Washington to lose, and it's tied late in regulation, and the Philadelphia Flyers who need a regulation win to stay mm-hmm. alive pull, the, pull their goaltender. Oh, yeah. And the Washington Capitals and Alexander Ovechkin are staring at an empty net for four minutes to get a win. That would really piss me off. Oh, my gosh. I did not consider that. (laughs) Oh, we've got all the scenarios, and that that is one that could come down. So, you know, we'll keep track in the Valley Bar. We'll have the the Washington-Philadelphia score there. But, sure, these are all scenarios that you have to think of. But you know what? When you look back... Um, the Red Wings are in this position because, and all these teams are in this position, and you can go back to games that blow in leads that you have. I, I always think back to the 4 nothing lead over San Jose, and you lose to them in overtime. How big would another point look in that game? You lose two to Arizona here and there. You lose in your building to Anaheim. So you fight, you, you know, you lost a 4 nothing lead uh, to the worst team in the National Hockey League, who's, I don't know, minus 100 in the goal differential. So that one hurts. But that's revisionist history. You just have to take care of your business tonight. You win the game, and you hope you get some help out of town. All these teams that, and the Flyers are in the same boat, Pittsburgh in the same boat. You're not controlling your destiny. The Washington Capitals are the one team who control their destiny. They win, they're in, regardless of what anyone else does. Hey, Kenny, it's Maz. Thanks again for coming on with us. Just before you mentioned that empty net stat, Ryan asked something at the beginning of the show, and he said, what are the odds? And I don't know if you even have a stat on this. When a team pulls their goalie, what are the uh, how many? What is the percentage of empty net goals versus game tying goals or game winning goals? Not a clue. I I ninety percent. ninety percent empty net. Oh, empty net over yeah. over a tying yeah. over a tying goal. Um, I don't know if it would be that high. I don't know where the skill level is today. Um, I'm not in the way the goaltending is today where save percentages are no longer 915. You're, you're at yeah. 90, yeah. 905 is like a medium for the National Hockey League. So I don't know. Um, I could have our stats people, Matt, look it up and, and, and see. Thanks, uh, we, 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 can go, we can go to our folks. Maybe they'll figure it out percentage but that's not a that's not a bad one to have tonight if we uh yeah. you know and we will get word because obviously our crew's keeping an eye on the game or what are the chances of a tying goal to yeah okay that's you know I what because it. you know we always say and here's one we, we, we i've mentioned a few times over the years where you think you know a team gets a power play there's a penalty at the end of the period right and you're yep. continuing on to the next period and we always say well you got fresh ice with which to work on the power play the percentage chance that you score in a carryover penalty to the next period is less than you'd score if the power play continued in the period. I bet. It's a greater penalty kill because the teams go in there, they adjust. You know, there's a special team penalty killing too. They adjust to how the other power play is going to be. They're rested. They come out there. They have their game plan too. The carryover, even though the ice is all nice and smooth, doesn't (laughs) benefit necessarily a team to score on the power play when people think it would. It doesn't. So I'll check that stat. Yeah, thanks, Kenny. I'll, I'll wait for that stat tonight uh, on, on the broadcast. Maybe Mickey uh, could oh, give me the answer. Oh, only if it's pertinent and we work it in and there's an empty net, heaven forbid, All right, brother. and the Flyers pull it. I don't even want to get into that scenario where I have I'm to use you. it. So you can text me in a few days. I'll let you know. <laughs> you bet, man. You bet. Hey, uh, you know, Darren McCarty works with us here, and he's, matter of fact, getting his hair cut behind us. And he wanted me to mention to you, he met you in the gondola uh, a couple of nights ago. Yeah. And he says last he is. Night, he, yeah, he said he is the reason that uh, the Red Wings are in this position right now because he gave that extra that extra good prayers, I guess, for him. 
Of course he did. We hugged one another, and I said, yeah. And we talked about nerves in a game. And I, you know, I mean, Darren's been in the big games where you have to control your nerves. Me, I'm just watching what happens below me. You can get nervous, but I have no bearing on the game. Darren actually had a bearing on the game. So, yeah, he knows what those situations were like, but I could see as happy as he was, he was a little little nervous for the guys because you can't control it on your own, just like we can't. We're, you know, we're at, uh, we're at their mercy, but a uh, good thing those guys uh, can control theirs and come through it again. That's where it comes back to the guys who've been there before. And this isn't a young team. And, you know, the Red Wings through what they're doing here in the rebuild and older guys fall off. But hopefully the young guys learn from these guys. And that's where that presence comes through for years to come. Hey, Ken, you know, when I'm the Red Wings took a step back, let's say over the last five weeks, <clears throat> well, five weeks ago, uh, Alex DeBrinkett is a guy that didn't necessarily step up when uh, uh, Dylan Larkin went down. And we all have slumps. Like I had him in football. I went through stretches where I dropped passes, just couldn't figure it out. But in the last five games, it seemed like it's going very well for Alex Brinkett. Last night, five shots on goal, uh, a goal, uh, three assists. Like, what's changed for Alex Brinkett? Because he's a major part of what the Red Wings are trying to do as it relates to win games, get into the playoffs. What's changed for him in the last five games? He's playing a lot, a lot better. Well, it's just squeezing the stick too tight. And for a big part of it, when he went, I don't know, was it one in 19 or something yeah. and hadn't scored in, in a dozen games or something like that. But, you know, again, Dylan Larkin had missed some of that time too. So as I spoke of earlier, you know, Comfer and Cop are fine players, but they're not driving the line offensively. So all of a sudden, you don't have the matchups. You go on the mm-hmm. road. You can shut down uh, Debrinket. Uh, and when they played Debrinket and Kane together with Comfer, now they're shutting them down. Hopefully it opens up Lucas Raymond. But other teams have matchups too. And and you're just Very not true. getting the opportunities. And, he, you know, he'd, he'd hit some goal posts. He just missed nets. It happened to him last year in Ottawa too um, when he scored 27. So he's met that and roughly the, the same number of points and, and exceeded that this year with 67 should we said at the start of the year should he be a 41 goal scorer like he did twice with Chicago not necessarily but if he didn't score 30 would it be a disappointing season for him yes um if he had a big night tonight he could still get there he's got 27 but he'll tell you he's not where he should be considering it's something like seven his first nine but he was probably just pressing too tight things go well sometimes but once he gets one as he's done now um, he can find it, and you know he's got three goals the past three, and he's got thirteen yeah, he points the past thirteen. So it's not like he's been non-existent, but he's a goal scorer, and they're going to run through slumps, except those who are exceptionally elite. And some have it. I mean, Stamkos has done it. Ovechkin, the start of the year, we thought he was finished. We thought Alexander Ovechkin was finished. There's no way he's going to catch Gretzky. Well, you know what? He may not have scored for half the season, but uh, didn't he ever come back after that? Even Tyler Bertuzzi went like one in 32 games, yeah. and now he's got 15 his past 26. So, guys, you just you just feel a role sometimes. You get a different line. You start to click. So I'm not worried about the, the brinket. I think he's probably going to be close to a 30-goal score. Hey, Ken, that's, that's, that's good. Ken, last one for you. And speaking of a 30-goal score, Lucas Raymond last night, 30 and 31, 40 assists this year. He's 22 years old. You had mentioned highest Red Wings draft pick since Keith Primo. Um, did the Red Wings – have the Red Wings found their star, that guy – Everybody talks about having a guy on your team. Is he that for this team? 100%. Yep. And he's going to get paid. He's going to get paid. And I don't know what Steve was thinking. You know, you don't want to go bridge now what he's done. Boy, you want to lock him up as long as you can. And I don't know what that number is because I haven't gone through all the comparables, but him and Cider, uh, yeah, what he's had, he's pulled the Red Wings through. I mean, 10 points the past five games, 20 points and 14 goals the past 17. He's a star, and he works so hard in the offseason. He doesn't lose the puck battles like he used to. The story's been told. He had to get stronger, and he did, and nothing faces this guy. And in big moments like he was in Sweden and in junior and when the Red Wings and Chris Draper were scouting him, this guy just comes up big in big games. And you can just see how he's fighting through now and finding pucks, and he'll make moves where defenders are going, what did he just do? So, you know, when the Red Wings took him fourth and Tim Stutzla probably would have been their guy if he were available because Stutzla's a center. And you thought, you know, in Ottawa grabbed him one pick in front, and you thought, boy, I don't know. If you had to do a redraft, where would Raymond be? Uh, Lafreniere and Stutzla. I don't – it's a it's a tough call, but he is a legitimate star. There's no doubt about it. And uh, right now he's leading the Wings with 71 points, uh, three up on Dylan. Um, he would be the first winger 
uh, to lead the Red Wings in points in Sergei Fedorov. Oh, incredible. Full, in a full it's season. a name. Incredible. Yeah, so, oh, no, I'm sorry. Not Fedorov. I'm sorry. First winger. I'm sorry. Let me correct that. Okay. First winger since Shanahan. We all know Fedorov's the center. First winger since Shanahan in 02 to lead the Red Wings in points. So that's how Sweet. long it's been where Fedorov years. and others down the middle. Yeah, where others, Fedorov and others down the middle, were leading in Larkin and Zetterberg and Datsuk, et cetera. But, yeah, going back to what Brendan Shanahan did in 02, um, Lucas Raymond is a legitimate star. Great to see him just, just turn 22. Amazing. Hey, Kenny, last second here. Who's your Stanley Cup final? Take the Red Wings out of it for now. Who's your Stanley Cup oh, final? Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> want, me take, take, want to take the Red Wings out of it since they're not even in it yet? Okay. Yeah, take the Red Wings out of it right now. Uh, who, who do you like in the finals? Who's going to win it? Oh, boy, it's a tough call. Um, uh, I do like either Carolina or the Rangers uh, okay. in the East. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the West, it can all come down to goaltending, can it? Yeah, um, of course. I, you know, I like that. I like Dallas. Wow, yeah, I like Dallas. That's what D Max said. Yeah, <laughs> that's what Max said. He did. To me, if it's not Dallas, would I root for Ken Holland in his final season? Oh, I know yeah. people like to take shots at him, but we I love, love him. Kenny. Love Ken and, Holland. Uh, yeah, I love him too. And it's people a great can manager. take shots all they want. That's okay. He's a great manager. You bet. He's a great person. And I remember when he signed Zach Hyman, people went, what the hell are you doing? Well, he's nearly got a 60-goal score there. <laughs> wow. Six million, so, you know, uh, it's probably the greatest free agent signing, uh, certainly in the history of the Oilers and uh, maybe overall anywhere. And, yeah, you've got your stars in McDavid and Drysaddle, obviously, but you still have to round it out. Um, so I, I, I'm rooting for Edmonton, but realistically, I think Dallas, um, and it's a tough call between Carolina or the Rangers. All right. All right. I love it. The great Ken Daniels. Thanks, Ken. Ken, thanks so much for the time, my friend. We really appreciate it. Enjoy the game tonight. Back to work, Ken. Thanks, guys. Thank you. My <laughs> pleasure. Thanks for the distraction. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, man. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. We'll be watching tonight you on bet. Valley Sports Detroit. Ken Daniels will hey, have the call. Say hi to Absolutely. Bet, Absolutely. Yeah, you got we'll, it. We'll do. And we're on, by the way, by the way, we're on TV 20 as well. Oh, that's nice. right. You know what? I, I actually I actually watched that last night on TV 20 wow. because it was um, it, it was closer to I was going back yeah. and forth with a couple of channels. So it was, I liked closer. it on 235 uh, there you go. TV 20. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so okay. much, uh, Ken. Go. Good call by you. My pleasure, guys. All right. You got yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so Bye. two ways to watch the wings tonight. TV 20 and, of course, Valley Sports. Is Ray Detroit. Lane gonna be on? God no, but hey, uh, Brad Galley was uh, oh, doing. Uh, he was doing. I love with that. Drew Miller. Oh wow! A little uh, nice. pre-post, absolutely. Shout out to BG. Absolutely. Man, test my test my Red Wings now to see if I'm correct. Brendan Shanahan was traded here for one Paul Coffey, I do believe. I don't remember. No. Paul Coffey. Hartford Whalers, right? Got rid of Paul Coffey. They brought in Brendan Shanahan. Or it was Shanahan. Carolina. Was he in Carolina? It was Carolina, I believe. Shanny. I don't remember that trade, actually. Look at look look making up. me dig now. I'm telling you, Paul Coffey. We got okay. rid of Paul Coffey, brought in Brendan Shanahan. Okay. All right, guys. I uh, love Shanny. He was the number one pick of the Devils. He was always a guy we loved. From a team on the rise to a team in the toilet, we'll get to the Detroit Pistons next. But first, a message from us here at WSN and our NFL Draft Party. All right, guys. April 25th and 26th. You know it. It's next week. We got it. The entire Woodward Sports family, as we broadcast the first three rounds of the NFL Draft, we're going to be downtown at the corner of Woodward and Adams at the 313 Draft Party presented by Figer Law. All we do is win. 21 and over and free to everyone. Party starts at 2 on Thursday. The live draft coverage begins at 8 p.m. We hope to see you downtown at the 313 Draft Party. Special thanks to Sorokis and Glorious. While the world watches Detroit, we're going to show you how the world parties right downtown. Detroit parties at the 313 Draft Party. Make sure you're down there. We'll see you. And go Lions, obviously. And, of course, the Lions and everyone else that's smart with their pets. Take it. Take their pets, and they take them to Premier Pet Supply. Hands down, Michigan's best pet store. Best pet store. Family-owned and operated for over 30 years. 13 Metro Detroit locations. Over 60 brands of food at the lowest prices available. And curbside delivery if you need it. They have nutritionists on site and on call as well. Do not settle for less. Give your pet the best. It's PremierPetSupply.com. The most talked about Detroit media by other Detroit media. And we love it. It's the Woodward Sports Network.
Come to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. A network for the city, by the city. Woodward Sports is Detroit Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Thank you to the Detroit Lions and Sheila Hamm for the best season in Lions history. Now it's time to let Brad Holmes cook. Woodward Sports. Planet Fitness, your fitness is essential. That's why you got to sign up. Now, look, the summer is coming. Guys got to get in shape. Women, you got to get in shape, too. You know where you want to do that at? You want to do it at Planet Fitness because they feature the squeaky clean gym. And not only that, it's the judgment-free zone. Everybody wants to work out, but you want to work out at your own pace. Don't want to be bothered with anybody else. We're going to Planet Fitness where it's also only $10 a month. $10 a month is a long way to go to be clean, squeaky clean jump, and where your fitness is essential. Simply put, come on down to Planet Fitness. And after you come on down to Planet Fitness, why don't you take yourself to Shake Shack? Register for the QB Challenge. That's right. You win two tickets to see the home opener for the Detroit Lions, the Kings in the North. That's right. Or scan this QR code right here on the screen in the top right corner or go to wobblesports.com where you can click on the link. Everybody wants to see the Lions play. Well, this is a chance to do it for free. Because you got to think, tickets will sky right. Take yourself to Shake Shack. QB Challenge win two tickets. Lions home opener. All right, guys. Welcome back. Woodward Sports Network. I wanted to get to this um Sadly, because uh, <laughs> this was incredible. Yeah. At When I was driving home yesterday, it was like 5 o'clock. And I think I pointed out when we were doing the show, it was 2.22 yeah. p.m., right? And I remember calling it out, right? It was like, guys, it's 2.22 p.m. And we have not had any news from the Detroit Pistons regarding a firing of Troy Weaver yet. <laughs> what do you Absolutely. mean I'm fired? <laughs> and then it was five o'clock and I'm like, what's nothing? You can't, it can't be serious. Got some news on it. And then there was a tweet from Woj. And granted, I looked at this Twitter and examined every part of the Woj, his followers, who he was following, who was following him, the count, the number of followers, the blue check mark wasn't good enough. I went through the spelling of his name to make sure this post was accurate. It says, Detroit Pistons general manager Troy Weaver will remain in place as the franchise begins a search for a new head of basketball operations. Sources tell ESPN. Before I read the Pistons statement, what was your reaction, Braylon? Foolishness. Foolishness. Because in my estimation, it's basketball head of basketball operations. Me, he would be over Troy Weaver. Why is Troy Weaver still on the staff? We went through a laundry list of reasons why he shouldn't be on the staff anymore. Why they should move in a new direction. So to answer your question, Ryan Amani, foolishness. First thing that came to mind. I thought it was just the way I thought it would be. I didn't think they were going to fire him. Uh, I don't think anything will happen with Monty Williams. Uh, it's unfortunate, but if they do hire this new basketball uh, president. Maybe he wants to pick his own general manager. That's the only thing I could think of. You don't get to hire your replacement at any job. And this leads me to believe that Tom Gores is not a very serious person. And this uh, organization is not a very serious organization. Um, you know, the uh, Pistons came out with a statement saying the Pistons announced the club plans to reorganize and bolster its basketball front office, filling a new role of head of basketball operations. Uh, General Manager Troy Weaver and basketball staff will remain in their positions and current roles while the organization assesses and where adjustments are needed. And, and then it goes down and uh, committed to doing whatever. Listen. 
Troy Weaver, Arn Tellum, Arn Tellum's kid. Um, gotta go. You, no doubt. You know, I mean, this is a. You need a sweep. The, the, you need an entire new operation. And if you need help, call Magic Johnson, call Jalen Rose. Call Isaiah Thomas. Call somebody that is here that's got a little bit of basketball. Call Chris Weber. I like yeah. get a call. Get Greg Kelser. Isaiah Thomas, you get him down. Here. Get Isaiah <laughs> Thomas. Call Larry Bird. Yeah, whoever Isn't Isaiah already with Phoenix. Well, I don't think he's working. With, he's an advisor. Uh, whatever. Yeah, I get him too. Call point. Larry Brown. Yeah. And get some serious basketball people. To help you conduct a search. And at that point, man, uh, this is just, I don't even know what to say about it other than this is just, uh, at what point does the NBA have to step in? Yeah. Like they did in New Orleans and be like, you are ruining a franchise. Like this is just down to the dirt. Seth Floyd says, all I can do is laugh at this point. To keep from crying. Thank goodness I'm not a diehard NBA fan. Gores is our Dan Snyder. It's a great call right there. It is. It's a super fan, of course. Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday, and I think we're, you know, I'm tired of beating a dead horse. We know what it stems from. It stems from Tom Gores. It starts at the top. That's what any organization in the professional sports ring. And he just doesn't seem to want to be around. He doesn't seem to want to take it serious. And this is what you get. You get a guy in Troy Weaver. We talked about the draft picks. We talk about what the team looks like right now. And I understand Jalen Doran. I understand Kay Cunningham. But that being said, this team doesn't need, like, I don't even know what moves you make. Because also, there's this draft, like, what are you going to do in this draft? This draft is on record to be potentially one of the worst in 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get better through the draft. Mm -hmm. it, Troy Weaver can't even have, like, even though Troy Weaver is, you know, not necessarily done a great job, he's done a horrible job, you're not going to get better in this draft. Like, what happens? Tom Gorse is at the top. You're not going to get better through Troy Weaver in the draft. There's nothing, there's nowhere you can get. It's just a situation where... I don't, who, who do you hire in front of Troy Weaver, and what is their and what is their role? What is the role of the person that you're hiring, director of basketball operations? And let's say that they keep Troy Weaver, they're not going to hire a replacement. What is the conversation like? What is the goal? What is the mission? And who do you hire in that role? Can I just say this? And Tom, correct me if I'm wrong yes. here. In Braylon, obviously, yes. Way it. I have never been a fan of making moves to make moves. I think if you don't trust your own process, that is just a bunch of nothing speak by just firing people to fire people, right? But you have very few people in this city that care about your organization. Very few. Like, less than very few people still care about the Detroit Pistons. Uh, it is as apathetic about a professional franchise in this city as an entire fan base has ever become regarding one Detroit sports team. For the PR of it alone, this firing should have been done at 8 a.m. yesterday morning. For the PR yeah. of it of alone, yes. to kind of save a little bit of face, act and pretend like you're a serious organization. Just pretend. we Act like one. Um, the firing should have been announced at 8 a.m. yesterday morning. And the fact that it wasn't, this becomes a laughing stock. This decision is not in the betterment of the Detroit Pistons. This decision makes your organization a laughing stock. Uh -huh. Worse than any organization, probably if you had to rank organizations not in basketball, in sports, the Pistons would be dead last. I firmly believe that, and I'm not just saying that to say it. The Pistons organization, if you add it up, baseball, football, basketball, hockey, the Pistons are dead last. Uh, Arizona yeah. Coyotes. And the Oakland Athletics. The, yep. the Pistons, Oakland, and f the Arizona Coyotes are, are in that grouping. Ryan and Maz, I've seen this before. Like, when an owner doesn't care... You can clearly tell. Ryan Armani, I got drafted to the Cleveland I got Cleveland Armani's. I got drafted to the Cleveland Browns in 2005. And 
Aaron, Randy Lerner had taken over for Al Lerner, his father, who had passed away. He was focused on the soccer teams. He was focused on his credit card businesses. He didn't care. He hired Phil Savage. Look, I love Phil Savage. He's over the senior bowl. Shout out to Phil Savage. Phil Savage was not a good situation and didn't know what he was doing. And you saw it. First year, we go 4-12. and 12. Next year, we go 4-12. and 12. The following year, we had a good year, 10-6. The next year, we go 3-13. and 13. The moves he made, they were just questionable all throughout, all four years. And we didn't get better, but Randy Lerner, he wouldn't step in because he didn't care about the team because he was making money while doing other things as well. He was never around. He was always aloof. It gets to the point where you go from being 22 and not understanding – this is someone that doesn't care to 23, to 24. You're starting to understand to 25, you're wondering, why is this GM still on board? Why is this head coach, Romeo Cornell, still on board? It's because the owner didn't care. And you know what that does? It puts a team in a situation where they get further and further and further behind. After Phil Savage left, Cleveland Browns didn't make the playoffs for the first time until Baker Mayfield in 2019. You're talking about it just goes work and makes it harder and harder and harder in a sport where we're not getting any favors from the general, I mean, from the commissioner in Adam Silver. Listen, Troy Weaver is persona non grata at LCA. The fans, are, they don't want him. You saw he had an interaction with a fan a month ago, two months ago, whatever it was. Listen. Maz, does that let you know that he, he's in over his head? He's done. He's done. It's I not, agree. It's, it's, he's done. Agreed. He's done. I mean, that's embarrassing, man. You're going to bring this guy back that – the fans already nah. have issues with. The fans have already called him out. How does he show his face in that place? Listen, I don't want any person to nah. ever be abused like that. I felt for Troy Weaver that night. I don't think he probably should have showed his face at that moment with this team, the way it's going. They won 14 games this year, guys. It's the worst record in franchise history. Back-to-back -back last place finishes in the NBA. Back-to-back. -back. They've got five players on the team. Five. You need 12, 13 players. What's he going to do? He's got money. Who wants to come here? Right. Ryan. Who wants to come here? He's got to go. For his own good, he's got to go. Ryan Maz, like when, when you only, because at that time, I think they only had something like seven wins, seven, eight wins. When you have seven, eight wins and you're feeling less than 35% of your arena, you can't go after the fans that are there. Mm. Those fans, wherever how they got there, however they got the tickets, whether gifted, whether paid for, they're still in the arena for a team that has seven wins. You can't go after them. Mm. And even worse, you can't double down and bring that person back. Talking right. about Troy Weaver. Can't right. do it. I'm just Won't do it. Yeah. So Can't win with them. Can't win with them. <laughs> without them. If, like, guys, they are 31... And 133 in the last two seasons. Yep. 31. They have lost 102 more games than they have won. Yes. And what did it get them? <laughs> That's an entire Nothing. NBA season. They got them Killian Hayes. They got them Sadiq Bey. They got a Sar Thompson out of the Isaiah deal. Livers. You know, I mean, uh, that is just in. Incredible. No, uh, of those 133 losses, it got him a Sar Thompson, Marcus Sasser, and whoever else they get this year. Yep. Day ninety. Like no, no, no. That's before. Oh, true, 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 true. In the 133 losses in 164 games. Yep. And that, that's that's as bad. That has gotten you that's a Sar Thompson, Marcus Sasser, and whoever you get this year. Which is nobody. Which is nobody. If I told you right now, like let's let's just play a game and let's have fun. If I told you right now you had the number one pick in the draft, let's just give it to him. Detroit Lions got the number one pick. Who are they drafting? You don't even know. Some guy. Mass, tell trained. me somebody that they're gonna draft. Number Zach one pick. It, exactly. And we're talking about Caitlin him. Caitlin Clark. Oh, she's I, picked last night. Like, this is real. Like, they give us the number one pick this year, Ryan. Who we drafting? I really don't know. Watch, we have the number one pick this year. Right. A year that will not help the Detroit line, uh, they, Detroit they, Pistons. They probably at all. won't. It'll probably be two or three, they'll, and it won't matter anyway. It just, it just. They'll give San Antonio one. San Antonio. San Antonio gonna get, get one, one again. No, kind of like. Th there's no way they're winning again. Yeah, like Cleveland, Cleveland won twice in a row. Like Cleveland did when I mean, they it was got a LeBron Kyrie makeup. The make, yeah, LeBron makeup. And then of course New Orleans got it when they didn't have an owner. Didn't Washington get it uh, or Golden State John get Wall. it or something like that when they had uh, Chris Webber and then uh, Juwan Howard? 
back in the day or something like that. Chicago might have had a couple of back-to-back. I just don't see the Spurs getting it back-to-back. And, you know, it's fixed. Well, they have 60 losses. I mean, it's not like even if they don't have – even if they do get the number one pick, this isn't like last year where it's just like they shot up. I mean, they did lose 60 games, so it's not yeah, like some like, what, like four? crazy. What, what are they going to lose next year with a seasoned victor? Are they going to lose 40 games next year? No, nah, no. Nah, next year, if, if 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 San Antonio gets number one pick, they'll find that one player that the Pistons wouldn't find if they got number one. They'll find that one player. <laughs> they win 44 games next year. Cause, That's what I said. They'll lose about 40 games. Oh, 100%. No, they'll lose 38. Wow. Because you got to look at it this way. Victor Wimbyama, as well 60, as he played this year, he's still on a yeah. pitch clock. From 60 losses this year, next year yeah. will be a huge jump for San Antonio. Yeah. They well, got the best, play, well, the best yeah, season I mean, look in at, the modern era. Well, look at Houston, ever. okay? And we mentioned this last year. Last year, Houston lost 60 games. They went 41-41 and 41 this year. And they had the fourth overall pick. Right. Not They didn't get Victor. They got Amen Thompson. Yeah. Their general manager just made some shrewd moves. Um. You know, bringing in veterans like Fred Van Fleet. Yeah, it's just go. what he did. Uh, so, uh, I, I mean, unless you guys got any fixes for the Detroit Pistons, man, I just I was shocked by that yesterday. Definitely shocked by that. <laughs> uh, playing tournament starts starts tonight. Starts tonight. I do think the Lakers are going to try to lose that, tonight. Give me the uh, odds tonight. Bring them up. Bring up. Uh, bring up the schedule. Hold tonight, on. Bro. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. Let's go hold over. It. Let's go game by game here. Good tonight. job, Pete. Tonight. Tuesday, April 16th, you got the Lakers and the Pelicans. And then late game, you got the Warriors and the Kings. Remember, the Warriors and the Kings had a tremendous playoff series, I want to say, last year, actually. Maz, the Kings were... Went seven. They were, Kings were number two in the uh, yeah. in term, uh, two in the West. Go ahead, Ryan. Let's go up and down. What, so, what do you got? two games tonight, two games tomorrow, okay? So, you've got the seventh seed and the, ten, seventh seed and the eighth seed, uh, New Orleans and the Lakers facing off. The winner of that game... Gets the number seven seed. The loser of that game will play on Friday. Did you say the Lakers are going to lose tonight? They're going to try to lose tonight. They're getting a point and a half. New Orleans is favored. They're home. Point and a half. And they just lost, actually, on the last day of the regular season. The Lakers played New Orleans in New Orleans. Final day of the regular season. Stayed in New Orleans to play this game. And that's the, when uh, the LeBron Lakers got 29. The Lakers game. won that game 124-108. Yeah. They are now a one-point underdog. <laughs> yeah. What a fix. I told you two days ago they were going to try Listen, to lose Listen, everybody. You did. Go you, you now did. and bet the Pelicans. Just bet them straight Bye, up. Pelican. Don't even play with the spread. Just bet them on a money line. That's a lock tonight. <laughs> the Pelicans are a freaking lock Tonight, Ryan, can you go over that? What was that last okay, game again? So, so the deal is, the deal is. No, no. What was the last game of the regular season again? One twenty-four, one hundred eight. One Lakers. Who was home? New Orleans. Who's home tonight? New Orleans. What's the spread? One. Yeah. So the point is, guys, if you're just trying to catch along, be like, why do the Lakers want to lose? Well, Whoever wins this game tonight automatically gets the number seven seed in the playoffs. The number seven seed in the playoffs will play the two seed Denver Nuggets. The champions. The defending NBA champions. And they will win again. And the odds on favorite to win the championship. The Lakers want no part of the Denver Nuggets. That is the one team that they cannot beat. So you don't want to play them in the first round. Maybe New Orleans. Maybe uh, Dallas. Maybe Phoenix. Maybe whoever. Could maybe the Clippers could take down, and, maybe Minnesota could take down uh, Denver. Basically, to elaborate on your point, you made this point yesterday. It's the same thing that happened last year, Maz. The but, Lakers could beat anybody in the playoffs in the West except the Denver Nuggets. They didn't have to meet the Denver Nuggets until the Western Conference Finals, and now it's the same thing. Ryan were Myers. gassed by then. But 100%, but they got there. Yeah. They got there because AD, you have LeBron. LeBron has been doing this now for 21-plus years, so he knows how to extend the series. That's AD, he knows how to play every other game, and then you get Austin Reeves uh, and Rui uh, Moore. So you're right. If they can just get away from the uh, the Nuggets, they can beat anybody else this is and free then match money. up with them again. Yeah. And then tonight, the Warriors and Kings play at 10 p.m. Yeah. The Warriors and Kings in the 9 10 game. The loser of that game eliminated. The winner of that game will play 
the Lakers. <laughs> because right, the, the, the loser, the loser of, tonight's, of yeah. tonight. So yeah, for a, for a chance for the eight seed. So the play. winner, the winner of the ten p.m. game will play the loser of the seven thirty game. Correct. And the winner of that game on Friday gets the eight seed against the OKC Thunder, who Correct. is the one seed, but they're very young, very inexperienced. And the Lakers would love the OKC Thunder over the Denver Nuggets. That's a good game yeah. tonight, huh? Yeah. A two question. and a half. Warriors are two and a half favorite on the road. I think the Kings win that game. Here's a question for you, man. LeBron and Steph Curry, they've been the rivalry, correct? Yeah. They've been the rivalry for the better part of 10 years now. They've been the one they took over for insert rivalry here. Is this going to be the last time that we're going to chance, get a chance to see these guys in the playoffs? Oh, wow. Because if Steph wins and the Warriors win, then LeBron, they will play them if they lose. Is this the last chance, Ryan and Maz, that we'll see these two match up? LeBron's year 21. You never know what's going to happen next year with his squad. And then yeah. Steph, his team seems to be falling apart. We don't know if Draymond will be back and Clay right. seems to be getting posted in a lot of different directions. Is this it? I don't think they match up because I don't think uh, Golden State wins tonight. I think Sacramento wins. Is this the last tonight. opportunity yes. for them to match up? Yeah. Uh, well, you never know, but yes. I'll say yes just for the argument's sake because... Um, Warriors are done. Yeah, yeah the Warriors... T- and I made this comparison yesterday. The Warriors, to me, feel like the 93, 92, 93, 94 Pistons. Yeah. Just a team that was done, end of the run. You know, maybe yeah. you bring in... Uh, you know, um, Bison Dele or somebody, uh, Terry Mills, <laughs> to try to keep it going. But yeah. uh, in the end, Bison it just Daly. doesn't. Uh, just in the end, it doesn't work out. Michael Kerr. You know, yeah. Uh, but man. yeah, man, it's uh, it's going to be Elden interesting. Campbell. Now, there's two more games tomorrow in the Eastern Conference. That's the you know seven eight game. That's the Heat seventy sixers in the seven eight game. Joel Embiid is back and playing well. Absolutely. Nice. And then uh Hawks and Bulls in the nine ten game. Couldn't tell anything about that game. But Joel Embiid is back and he's playing well. I mean he took off the last two months of the season for that knee. He's back and he hasn't ever had necessarily a big playoff win, mm. but when he's healthy, you know, the so 76ers are 31-8, yep. I do believe, when he's Good healthy. Good TV night tonight, huh? Oh, man. Well, I mean, first and foremost, look, it's, it's wings tonight. Wings. Right. Of course. I mean, that's, you know. But in between periods, you could flip the channel. Yeah, in between, you could. Do you know I've, I watch baseball every night? You know yep, that. every night. You know, yeah. I think I've watched every Dodger game because every channel I put on, the freaking Dodgers are on. Mm-hmm. Plus, Pete and I share the um, MLB package. <laughs> but the Dodgers, just watching that freaking team, it's literally, you might as well just, they should, the Dodgers should play the MLB All-Stars mm. this year. They should pick teams, they should pick players from other teams than the Dodgers. They got so six so Let them play the All-Star game this year. That's so funny. Wouldn't that be great? That is great. It, it's great, but then you, you you get to this point. Why can't they close the door? The, the, they did close the door once. It was a COVID year. Yeah. You know, Short asterisk, season. whatever, asterisk, but yeah. they cannot close that deal. They've had an all-star team for the better part Listen, of five years now. They're going to be hard to beat, Bray. Mookie. Uh, they're going to be hard to beat. Yeah. Yeah. Atlanta yeah. In, a, in a tight series. Something yeah. goes your Philly, way. Every. Still. Every pitch is there. so intensified in the postseason. Oh my God. Every single pitch. Speaking of Philly. And then you got B.A. on the call. On oh, B.A. <laughs> Ryan Anderson. Speaking of Philly, you got me thinking about their rivalry in the playoffs with the San Diego Padres. Like, what do you make of Manny Machado? Like, I told you that's my guy. Like, I don't mind. He's a stud. I don't mind the antics. You know, I, I think something came out this weekend where he hit a home run and he, like, stared down the Dodgers. You know they hate each other. The Dodgers and Padres hate. But I don't mind it, though. I don't Everybody either. else in the comments, oh, my God, just play baseball. I hate these guys. And blah. Hey, what's wrong with it? He hit a home run. Nothing. He I talked some stuff. It. I didn't Nothing. see it. He basically... Just- he hit a jack and just then throw at him next time. stared at the, young, the yeah. dugout and then walked around. Just throw, just throw at him next time. That's okay. Remember Fer- Fer- that. Fernando Tatis Jr.? What happened to him? Like what? I mean, he was he was baseball's PEDs. young. PEDs. Yeah. I mean, PEDs. baseball needed that guy, I think. Uh, guys, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk a little Lions. We'll go around the NFL. Also, we'll talk to Russell Brown. NFL Draft. Coming up right now. Uh, analyst. He is coming up right now. Wow, look at the clock. We'll talk to Russell Brown, NFL Draft Analyst for Fantasy Pros. We'll do it next. But first, a message from WSN. 
Everybody, you can grab the latest hot Detroit sports wearables at shop.woodwardsports.com. The latest hoodies, the tees, and the hats that are guaranteed to turn heads. And check out there the, uh, the, the black hoodie right there, the Campbell and Holmes, kind of like the political style hoodie. That's a sweet hoodie. You got the Tigers there. You got the Welcome to Detroit t-shirt. Check that one out. Also, don't forget that there is also a giveaway going on and that Monday is giveaway merch Monday here at Woodward Sports. Shop.woodwardsports.com and get that latest sports wearables. Also, I have good news and I have bad news. The bad news is insurance rates are going up across the board in Michigan. But the good news is that Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, more than ever, it's critical for you to have your insurance reviewed, and Swiss will make sure that your carrier does not slip in extra fees or raise deductibles. Call Mark at Swiss Insurance today or visit SwissINS.com and tell them that Woodward Sports sent you. We'll be right back. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. That's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy. It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles, and with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Hey, gang, let me tell you about Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac. You ex GMC. What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. That's exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford Buick GMC. Same great service that customers have come to know and trust. Located on Woodward, just south of Nine Mile in the great city of Ferndale. And if you're looking for a Chevy or a Cadillac, Les Stanford in Dearborn, where they have been on Michigan Avenue for over 55 years. You can find the brand you want under one umbrella. All GM brands under one umbrella. LesStanford.com. LesStanford.com. Together. Let's drive. And you can drive on over to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Awesome is when a guy can be a guy and get an amazing haircut. That's Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Stop in, sit back, relax. Let one of Lady Jane's talented stylists make you look and feel great. Walk in anytime, seven days a week. Lady Jane's wicked awesome. Oh, yeah. Wicked, wicked awesome. Oh, yeah, baby. All right. Um, sorry, do we uh, have Russell Brown? We do. All right. How about that? Time to talk about guy. Uh, NFL Draft right now with our good friend Russell Brown, NFL Draft Analyst uh, at Russ NFL Draft on X, Fantasy Pros, the Lions Wire as well. Russ, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. How are you? Russ. Uh, Russ. I am fantastic. We are. I, I'm hoping we get a day like this next Thursday. I'll tell oh, you that, please. Russ. I'm with you. Um, yeah, I'm with you. What is the intrigue here, Russ? Um, does the intrigue in this draft start at two? Is Jaden Daniels to the uh, Washington Commanders a lock? Uh, I'm hearing um, J.J. McCarthy is meeting with the Commanders today. Final pre-draft workout, or excuse me, final pre-draft visit with the Washington Commanders. Uh, what is the intrigue there with Washington at two? Yeah, I mean, for weeks I've been thinking it was Jaden Daniels, and now I'm starting to believe it's wide open because they're bringing in four quarterbacks today to talk about, you know, what options they're they're going to be doing. I mean, they're they're going through their final options here with Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Michael Penix, and JJ McCarthy. So obviously, we'll see next week. I, I believe it's it's Jaden Daniels. I mean, again, it could change with this final meet with these four these four quarterbacks but when I just look at Jaden Daniels and, and what he provides as far as being the quarterback um, 
that, that can change the game a little bit. I mean, just his mobility is such a weapon, and that's really what he would be for an NFL offense is he's an, a weapon. So I lean towards Jaden Daniels if something changes between now and next week. Obviously, I would report back and say something a little bit differently. But when I look at Jaden Daniels, like I said, the mobility really stands out. He stands tall and he's tough in the pocket, uh, throws with really good deep touch and anticipation. And I know his, his thinner frame will raise some questions, but I think he's the type of player that you look at offensive coordinators in, in this league, they want to build a playmaker at the quarterback position. He has those attributes for a team. Talking to NFL draft analyst Russell Brown, who's a friend of the show, Russ. It's been a minute. Good to talk to you, brother. Yeah, man, same. Likewise. Wanted to appreciate your information as always, so let's dive into it. I want to ask you a couple questions about Michigan players, but most notably we need to start off with J.J. McCarthy. So much has been made of J.J. talking about Minnesota moving up, or whether it was San Diego moving up, or whether it was the Broncos moving up. Now you're starting to hear a little bit more chatter coming out to saying that J.J. McCarthy may not even be a quarterback that's drafted in the top 15. What is your assessment of J.J. McCarthy and his draft process? What is he more likely to get drafted? They're likely to move up for him? Or is he likely to be staying put uh, Minnesota, let's say, at 11 or Denver at 12 and be able to be drafted that low? Certainly things can change, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not in the interview room during these yeah. quote-unquote top 30 visits, but the, the way it's been said to me is, is he's going somewhere in the top seven. Somewhere, okay. some, somewhere some way, someone's going to move up and take him or he's going to go at two or three. Um, you know, the, the, the wild card, really, it's not so much Minnesota. It's evident that they need to get a quarterback. They lost Kirk Cousins. The wild card is the New York Giants. And that's been the team really since Sunday morning of the combine that, that I've been told as, as far as doing quarterback research. I don't know if there's really been a team doing as much research on these quarterbacks than the New York Giants. And I've heard that since the Senior Bowl. Yeah. And that all started with Joe Milton. So I think J.J. is, is such an interesting study. I mean, you, you watch him, and, and obviously the state of Michigan is very familiar with him and what he's able to do as a 27-1 and starter at Michigan National Champion. So much to, to love about all that. Um, but, you know, he, but he's so tough for a player his size. He, fought, he, he faced pressure all the time, and he stood tall in the pocket and took it. He, he's got better mobility than expected for a player his size. Um, you know, he's a little bit smaller for the, you know, quote unquote, traditional prototypical quarterback, yeah. but he carries himself so well. And I, I love JJ just for the fact that he's so calm, cool and collected. And he doesn't seem like the type of player that's not ready for this stage. He seems like he's ready for the NFL media and the things that come with the responsibility of being an NFL quarterback. And part of his game, I think, is really resemblant to Brock Purdy in yep. San Francisco, not going to not going to be an elite talent by any means with arm strength or accuracy, but he's just so poised. And he, he I mean, he's a, it, you know, we talk about being a weapon with Jaden Daniels and, and his mobility. That's a weapon. That that, that poise is yeah. a weapon for McCarthy, and it can change the outlook of an offense and, and an organization for the next ten to fifteen years. Hey, Russ, uh, last question. I'll, I'll let Maz and Ryan jump into the, uh, the Detroit questions about the Lions and what they're going to do at pick 29 and Brad Holmes. Uh, I'm going to stick with this draft. This draft is an interesting one. I think every day you're hearing a difference. Outside of Caleb Williams at pick two, it's either Jaden Daniels, Drake May is kind of fading. JJ got mentioned at one point. It was Marvin Harrison at four, number one player on the board. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Malik Neighbors. Which one of those wide receivers are better? Joe mm -hmm. Alt, is he at five or four? Or is he at you move back? It seems like a draft where a lot of moving parts, a lot of a lot of players interchanging. What do you make of this NFL draft? Is this a good one in terms of projected actual first round talent in this draft? Is this a good draft? I, I think so. I mean, it's definitely offensive heavy, um, and I, and I think this kind of gets to be the case through every draft process. You know, two to three weeks prior to the draft, it gets a little crazy. I think the fatigue of the whole process for the the media, including myself. We start throwing different ideas out there. You hear chatter from certain scouts or, or agents, and you start thinking of these ideas. And that's what I lay up, you know, late at night thinking about. I'm not, I'm not thinking. No offense to my wife, love her. Right? She's laying next to me. I'm, I'm thinking about her too. But <laughs> deep down, I'm thinking about the NFL draft and these scenarios. And I'm just like, man, it would be something if Joe Alt went five and the Titans traded out of seven. And you know, you start thinking of all these different scenarios of what might happen. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I think really teams are going to stay put. They're going to draft the best player available. Sure. We're going to probably see a trade or two, maybe three, but I, I think it is a, a good draft. It is a very tough one to predict. I mean, it's different from most years. I, I feel like last year and even the year before I had a pretty good gauge on how this is all going to yeah. go. 
Uh, but right now with picks two, three, four, and, and really five, there's a lot of uncertainty in it. It's all because of the quarterbacks. But you think back to a few years ago, I'm, I remember being in studio with you guys talking yeah. about, you know, Malik, Malik Willis at two. Is that an option? Oh. And we saw what happened. You know, we saw what happened with Malik Willis. Not saying that that's going to happen with, with Drake May and Caleb Williams. I mean, these, these guys are a lot different than Malik, but those are the scenarios that happen. And then the board just kind of falls into place with really where those players should ultimately go. So I, I think that's how this is, this is going to go. Like, for example, Arizona at four, I think they stay put and they take Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't know how you yeah. cannot take I, him when he's staring you in the face. Hey, Russ, this more so is funny, and I'm going to let Maz get this in, man. Don't we wish it was like the WNBA draft where last night they had picked the, 12, yeah. the, the top 12 two months ago, and it was exactly as they <laughs> laid it out. Nobody changed in the two months of picking. It was like, well, here's one, here's two. They told us Angel Reese was going to be seven two months ago, and she went seven to the sky. So wait, at least it's not that predictable. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's not because if it was, I don't think I'd have a job. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. true. That it's this not. is true. Hey, Russ, uh, take me. I know you last time you had us on, you mentioned some players. I want to ask you again, the Lions at 29. You know, this ain't picking it. We're not picking in the top five anymore. We really have mm -hmm. no idea what's going to be the first 28 picks of this draft. I'll ask you a two-parter. A, do you think Brad Holmes, if there's a player he likes, trades up? And B, who do you like there at 29? Give me, give me three players. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I wrote a piece last week for, for Lions Wire talking about how the Lions truly are the biggest wild card in the draft because I, I do believe that. And we know every team is a wild card. But when you look at Detroit and what Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell have done, you, you think back to last year, I did not think we were walking away in the first round with Jack Campbell and Jameer Gibbs. I didn't think two years ago, live on stream in downtown <laughs> Detroit with you guys, that we were going to be watching Jamison Williams at pick 12. You, this oh, this team is true. Can do what? They, they can do whatever they want to do, and it wouldn't surprise me. I, I don't think they'll take a tight end. I don't think they'll take a quarterback, and I don't think they'll take a running back. But everything else, I think, truly is on the table. Um, so with that, I mean, I think if they were to move up at any point in this first round, I think it would probably be for a wide receiver just because it's the sexy pick. And I don't know if that would be Ryan Thomas Jr. I don't know if that would necessarily be A.D. Mitchell. I think either one would be fine. I, I, I don't know if they – have the ammunition or really the want to get up into that, you know, quote unquote Julio Jones trade up target territory where you trade a bunch of future draft capital. Brad Holmes seems to be very uh, into the draft and wanting to build through that. So if they were to move up, I think it would be for wide receiver, but staying at 29, first player that really stands out, and this might bore some people because I'm going to be talking about some offensive linemen because I think it's the sneaky need within this roster with how it's built. Kevin Zietler, great pro has played 181 games in his career as a starter, but longevity does, you know, come into, yeah, I mean, it comes into play, and the depth that interior offensive line is a little thin. Graham Glasgow, they got lucky that he was healthy last year, and they, they did re-sign him. Frank Ragnar, we already know about all that, but I think interior offensive line is a sneaky need for this team, and when I look at Zach Frazier, He's a player that really stands out. I know he was in Peter Schrager's mock draft today, uh, but Zach Frazier, so much to like. I mean, he's just a football player, and that's one thing that we know Detroit looks for. Plays with plenty of power. He drives defenders into the ground in the run game. Former wrestler, which is going to win a lot of locker rooms over because it helps yeah, him play will. with leverage. He had 159 wins as a, as a high school wrestler, only two losses, won four straight state championships. This guy – can play. The other interior offensive lineman I want to talk about is Christian Haynes. And just looking at an interview that Dan Campbell said today, kind of reading between the lines, we want to draft good football players that have gotten better throughout the course of time, going back two to three years. And he talked about Brad Holmes in that process. Christian Haynes, interior offensive lineman out of UConn. I went back and watched 2021, 2022, and 2023. This guy's made 49 straight starts, and he has consistently gotten better. And that was something that Dan Campbell kind of talked about today. And I look at that, and I'm like, you know what? That, is, that kind of fits what they're looking for. He can play right guard. He's, I think, the best pure guard in the draft. There's no he's going to be a tackle or a center. He's going to be a pure guard, and I think putting him behind Kevin Zietler for a year can do wonders for him. So I think maybe there's, there's a fit there just because of what he does in the run game. And then just going to the defensive side of the football, I have to get a, give a shout-out to Darius Robinson, who is – from my neck of the woods in Canton, Michigan. He went to Canton High School. He's from Missouri. This guy's six foot five, two hundred and eighty-five pounds, almost thirty-five inch arms. He's versatile. He can play in a four-eye, a five tech. 
and I know the Lions have added some depth up front, but if Marcus Davenport can't stay healthy, you can bring this guy in that has tremendous length, alignment versatility. He was kind of a hidden gem in a terrible 3-3-5 stack defense. I hate that defense, and it really limited what Robinson could do. He comes to Detroit. He can play in the natural 4-I-5 technique opposite Aiden Hutchinson. I think he'd be a great fit at 29. I'll tell you, Russ, Mel Kuyper better watch his back. Man. Man, what? <laughs> Listening to you, I feel, I feel like I'm listening to national television. Great job, man. <laughs> Easy. I it becomes easy that. to him as well. Hey, he side note on the offensive line, Taylor Decker, it turns out he was uh, – it's off-season workouts now. He, he informed us, uh, informed the press today, he had surgery over the, over the off-season on, on his foot and ankle. He'll be okay, but there's another guy that, you know, going yeah. down, like you said, offensive line is how this team is built. Uh, so you're not wrong. There could be an old lineman sitting yeah. there at 29. Yeah, and, and an offensive tackle that that can really come up into play and into into you know the, the conversation at twenty nine is is the cousin of Panay Sewell, Kingsley Sumitea out of BYU. Hey. Ah. Um, you know, six foot six foot five, three hundred twenty six pounds. He's a great athlete, quick feet. He gets out in space. He can, he can lead block. He can wall off second level defenders. He, he's a little rough around the edges. He needs to to really you know refine his his lower body skills as far as his quick you know his footwork in pass pro uh, and his pad level and, and hand placement, but his snatch trap technique that he uses in pass protection is great. And as a developmental left tackle at pick 29 behind Taylor Decker, that would be great. I don't know if that would leave kind of a sour taste in the, in the mouth of Taylor Decker as maybe he's trying to get a new contract. Yep. But if we're talking about longevity, Shumite makes a lot of sense at 29 as well. Hey, last one from me, Russ, and it goes back to the wide receiver you mentioned. And it is kind of a need. Now, I want to ask you about a guy that mm-hmm. is playing for the Lions, and it's Jamison Williams. What have you seen from him in his limited time on the field? Do you believe he was worthy of that pick? Do you believe he will become the receiver they thought he would become? Or do you think that, eh, you know what, let's get, some, let's get another guy in here just in case? You know, it's tough. I mean, I, I will say he hasn't necessarily lived up to the hype as the 12th overall pick, but he is still young. I mean, he, he is only 23 years of age. We knew what we were getting with the player that we watched live on national TV, Terra's ACL, and we knew what type of timeline it was going to be for him to have any type of impact really in year one. And then obviously really year two was more so that rookie season for him. So I, I'm really holding out hope. I think we've seen a lot of growth as far as what he can do as a big play guy a playmaker every time the ball's in his hands it just seems like he's able to make something happen if he can stay healthy and and really figure out some of the nuances of running routes I think he can become a little bit of a difference maker but we know that he is more of that vertical threat straight line speed type of receiver so every offense I think in the NFL needs that especially in Detroit who can play off of play action and I know there's a lot of of concepts with this offense where it's based off of play action and timing and getting into those windows off of dig concepts or high low concepts. I know there's so much with that, but at the same time, you need that guy that can go vertical or in the short areas of the field, with you know, design screens and those types of things. And I think JMO can do that for Detroit. Now, I, I think the big thing for him is 24 receptions last year. Can he get to, let's say 50, 55, if he can continue that growth, then I think we're, we're working with something here. And again, only 23 years of age. So I've seen the growth, but I, I would like to see it substantially in, in this upcoming season. Hey, Russell, as you said, it is an uh, offensive-heavy draft, especially a lot of offensive tackles uh, in that first round being projected, or offensive linemen projected going in that mm-hmm. first round. But there are a couple of defensive players. A lot of them, um, there are only a couple up uh, in the first, I would say, 13 picks or so. Quinion Mitchell, maybe Byron Murphy, if you will. But right where there's some good ones at, is a little bit before the Detroit Lions pick. And I know Mass asked you this question about Lions moving up. Are there any players? Jared Burst is a guy that I've been watching all season out of Florida State. And then Latu, uh, Latu, been watching that guy lately, watching a lot of his highlights. Not long arms, but with the explosion that he has, man. Like he can get to the back, uh, he can get to the uh, get to the running back, he can also get to the quarterback. Pause, are those two individuals that would intrigue you enough to potentially move up for? Because I'm big fans of both. Absolutely. I mean, both of these guys are top 15 players for me on my personal yep. big board. Um, first round players for sure. Starting with Latu, so much to love with his skill set. I mean, he is the best pure pass rusher yes. in this draft. I mean, he has a repertoire of moves. I mean, cross chop, the spin move, and so much more. Alignment versatility. We saw this at times with, with 
Agent Hutchinson last year and other pass rushers, they're, you know, they're moving around. They're playing as a, as a wide nine or, or a tilt seven or even as a nose, as a zero shade. He's able to do that for UCLA. He can do that with Aaron Glenn here in Detroit. You look at him, and, and he is just a pass rusher. And if that's what Detroit desperately needs, and he ends up getting into, let's say, 21, 22 range, go ahead and make that move yes. up to get him. And the same thing can be said about Jared. Yeah, oh, I'm with you. And, and the same could be said about Jared Verse. I mean, I don't know if he's going to be there. Uh, there's been a lot of conversations about possibly Denver, maybe L.A. at 19. So we'll see if he ends up getting there. And then Miami's been the, the heavy favorite right now at 21. But so much to like with him. A lot of speed to power within his game at six foot four, two fifty four. I think he fits a little bit better with what they're looking for as far as stopping the run because of that speed to power. But he has a long arm move to generate pressure. I think he's fluid enough in a two point stance or a three point stance. Got to get better as a tackler, but he's definitely a fit. And if if those guys are in reaching distance for Detroit, they can certainly make that move up. I think it's no brainers if they wanted to move up for a, for a pass rusher. Hey Russell, maybe this started with the Rams and the their mindset of f them picks. But I feel like <laughs> yeah. I feel like there was a time for almost my entire life where first round draft picks were gold and they were not moved ever. And then all of a sudden, maybe it was when the quarterback started moving all over the place, uh, Stafford and uh, Brady and uh, hell, even, um, you know, now Kirk Cousins and everything. I feel like teams are moving first round picks and moving off quarterbacks that they take high quicker than ever. Hell, look at the Jets. You know, they take Zach Wilson, number two, and then uh, sign Aaron Rodgers. I mean, just an example. Uh, the New York Giants are uh, being talked about as a team that may move off of Daniel Jones and draft a quarterback even. Um, how unpredictable has this draft become? Because for a long time, it, it was pretty predictable. Oh, you can't take a, a defensive back in the top five. You know, You know, stuff like that. Yeah, I think a, a big part of it is it's just it's such a win now league. I mean, these these coaches are on, you know, yeah, they signed four or five year deals, but they all know that in two years, if they're not winning and they're not showing any type of growth, they know that their job is on the line that upcoming season. And the same can be said about quarterbacks. But I think the biggest issues with quarterbacks, and and I think this is really stunning to some of the communication issues that you know we probably talked about this past fall with Michigan football and and just. Overall, that the communication that's in college football, where we got boards and, and hand signals and 17 quarter, you know, backup quarterbacks and coaches signaling stuff in for offenses. Why can't we put a headset in there? And and you know, the the, the verbiage of an NFL offense is so different from what is being done in college football. So I think if these quarterbacks were allowed to get some of the the perks of being an NFL quarterback at the college level, as far as the verbiage and the communication aspect of it, I think it would change really the way that they succeed early on in their career. I don't think there would be such this difficult grasp of, of the offensive playbooks that they're being handed nowadays. And I, I think also the big thing too is, is with these quarterbacks is, you know, social media plays a part in this too. I mean, these quarterbacks are out on social media. People are bashing Caleb Williams because, you know, he, he went to a fashion show. It, that, that has no impact on what he does. Yeah on the football field, let him live his personal life the way he wants to live it. But they hear that noise, and then I think it ultimately affects how they would perform. I know that if I was a pro athlete, I shouldn't care what people think, but at the end of the day, I know that plays a part too. So I think there's all these factors that, you know, back in the 90s and early 2000s, those weren't really the case. Now it is. Russ, last one. Jets, Giants. Brock Bowers to the Jets. Are the Giants getting a quarterback? Yeah. I mean, Brock Bowers to the Jets makes a lot of sense. I mean, just when you look at their overall position group there at tight end and the talent there, there's there's a bit of a drop-off. And, I mean, Tyler Conklin, fine player, shout out Central Michigan, but yeah. that's, to me, not the guy that you can necessarily hold out hope to be no. your, your tight end. And it always feels like Aaron Rodgers has always had a, a pretty consistent weapon there. I feel like this could be a, a landing spot for sure for him, especially if the run on the, the top three receivers happen. And, I, you know, coincidentally, Aaron Rodgers is in the facility. Brock Bowers is meeting in the facility at the same time. So uh -huh. uh, with, the with, with the Giants, yeah, I mean, quarterback makes a lot of sense. It really does. I, I, I think they're going to try to potentially move up to get one just because there's a lot of uncertainty around Daniel Jones. But they did bring in Drew Locke, and I feel like there's other needs there. So 
if they take one, I think it'll be a little bit later. Maybe it is Joe Milton. Maybe it's Spencer Rattler. Maybe it's day two, like Michael Penix. Michael Penix has been kind of a name that has been really linked to the Giants in recent weeks. So maybe that's ultimately what they do. I just look at pass catcher, and I like Jalen Hyatt. Darius Slayton can't stay healthy. Robinson looks like he's okay, but they need a true number one guy. I don't know if any of those guys are true number right. ones. Roma Dunze, to me, all day long if he's there at six. Cool, man. The great Russ Brown. Uh, we appreciate the time, buddy, Thanks, and uh, enjoy Thursday. Where do you watch the draft from? I mean, you. What are you doing? What's your plan on draft night? I mean, if it feels like, you know, everybody we're talking to, I mean, to get into that draft footprint, it almost feels like too it's much impossible. of a hassle yeah. and too much of a, uh, it's an impossible thing. What, um, what do you, how are you going to do it? Yeah. I mean, I'll be doing some live streaming with, with fantasy pros. Um, so we'll, we'll be at home. Um, going to, going to get down there though, for probably day two or day three, try to figure something out. Um, you know, but yeah, it just, it seems like you, you gotta, you gotta like take like something underground to get there because there's gonna be so much traffic and I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do, but uh, I'll figure something out, but definitely be doing something live with, with fantasy pros. So looking forward to that. All right. Yeah, we'll Russ. be looking forward to that. Thanks, uh, Russ. Thanks so much. Check out Russ on Twitter, on X at Russ NFL draft, of course, at fantasy pros. And of course, at the lions wire. We'll Russell get you on next week, Russ. Thank you, sir. Appreciate, appreciate you, you. Appreciate it, guys. You See got it. Talk. That's a uh, great stuff. A great analysis. I mean, he is as knowledgeable wow. about these players as anybody you will ever talk to. Unreal. It is so good to see. Uh, guys, we're going to take a break. Come right back. We'll go around the NFL. But first, a message from us here at WSN. That's right, everybody. It's Wake Up Woodward time, 8 to 10 a.m. right here on Detroit's number one sports network, Woodward Sports. Join Matt Broder, Sam Flannel, Kool-Aid, KG, and JB every Monday through Friday morning. Again, right here, 8 to 10 a.m. on Detroit's number one sports network, Woodward Sports. And we will return. Thank you to the Detroit Lions and Sheila Hamm for the best season in Lions history. Now it's time to let Brad Holmes cook. Woodward Sports. BGCSM 3C Sports Conference is coming during NFL Draft Week, starting on April 24th. Special guests will include Jerome Bettis, Barry Sanders, Eddie George, Aleem McNeil, Calvin Johnson Jr., Sean H. Wilson, Cynthia Freeland, Adam Scheffner, and more. This event is open to athletes, coaches, and parents, but space is limited. So go to our website and purchase your tickets today at www.bgcsm.org. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. A network for the city. City. By the city. Woodward Sports is Detroit Sports. Any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Hey guys, pay attention to that QR code on your screen right now because the Boys and Girls Club of Southeastern Lower Michigan and the Jerome Bettis Bus Stops Here Foundation proud to present the 3C Sports Conference to educate, inform, and inspire players, parents, and coaches in our local communities featuring impactful speakers like Jerome Bettis, Eddie George, and Adam Schefter. April 24th through the 26th. For more information and tickets, scan that QR code right there. That's right, on your screen. Sign up today. Great event there. Uh, Braylon Edwards, it is time. What's better 
crispy chicken and pizza. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's Sorokis. And by the you way, I told it. you guys yesterday, I did have a chance to go to Sorokis this past Sunday. The Nashville hot, it's real. Ladies and gentlemen, the spices are real. It is amazing, but just be warned, it is hot. They got the pizza is back, the Nashville hot chicken sandwich is back, as well as the tenders and the fried sierogies. Look, simply put, they do it. It is put together. It is crispy. It is good. And they work well for what we're sports. They also have salad and fresh sides. The pasta salad is amazing, by the way. If you want sierogies, just find one of their locations around Metropolitan Detroit. They are popping up all over the place. Or go to sierogies.com where you can figure it out. Nashville hot. Remember, it's hot. Mm. All right. Sandwich is hot, man. I absolutely Starve love Sorokis. No Starve doubt about it. it. Stop home at the Woodward <laughs> location on your way home, Tom <laughs> Mazaway. Hey, uh, let's go around the NFL, including some Lions. Yeah, let's Ooh. start in Allen Park because, Pete, you know it's underway and it's Lions off season. Let's go to lions.com training camp. Good morning. Back. Back to the Year four. Uh, off season yeah. four round. Go to four. Well, I started like when the season ended. <laughs> Jack Campbell. Jack Campbell's going to be good this year. We'll see. I have a feeling. It remains to be seen. Right. He, yeah. Him and Jack Campbell, about the, I mean, him and uh, Dan Campbell about the same speed. So I, I need I need to see more out of Jack this season. But did get some quality reps in there at the end. The, this is that optimistic time, Ryan Armani and Tom Mazaway. Shout out to my boy Dave Logan in the building. Hey, Dave. Like when you get a chance Shout to come in, in in April and the season's first starting and it's OTAs and got the draft around the corner and then there's mini camp. Like this is that time of the year, Ryan. Everybody has the same record. This is everybody has the same record. Everybody is zero zero. Everybody has seventeen games. Everybody has a chance. Everybody has the draft. Everybody had free agency. Everybody has what they believe is that piece. Everybody has that guy that they needed in the draft. Of those guys, if you look at the Lions last year, so this is always a very fun time, man. Being a former NFL player, is you walk in like okay. No matter what happened last season, playing for the Browns, I was always looking forward to this time of year. But, you know, when you're playing on losing teams, you're looking forward to this time of year. And even when you're on winning teams, like when I played for the Jets and we went all the way to the AFC Championship, we were looking forward to this because we added pieces that we thought could help. We added pieces in the draft, and we were just excited to take that next step. So this is one of my favorite times of the year because you can feel the optimism there. Look at the Lions fans. What are we expecting right now? Super Bowl. What are the Jets fans expecting right now to get to the playoffs, oh, maybe yeah. even win the division with uh, Buffalo falling, Super with Miami Bowl, falling? Well, yeah, well, they're unrealistic, but <laughs> let's keep it real. God, Everybody's rock. looking to be optimistic about their chance. Even the Panthers, who stink, are <laughs> optimistic about their chances in a division, which, you know, is up for grabs. Talk about the NFC South. So this is a very fun time in the NFL. Optimism is a key word. All right, fellas, let's continue. As I told Russ when uh, Russ Brown was on, Taylor Decker had off-season surgery on his ankle and foot. Mm. He said he's going to be okay, and uh, he's looking forward to the season. But, hey, that's another nick against uh, another one of our old linemen. It's an aging offensive line with yeah. Frank Ragnow and... Take a beating. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, and Taylor Decker. And, you know, Graham Glasgow is no spring chicken either. You know yeah, what I mean? He's, he's, he's healthy. And, yeah, you know, he's six or seven. He's in his 30s. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you get up there in your 30s in this NFL, yeah. in this version of your NFL. There aren't – what – wasn't there like uh, there Marvin Harrison uh, – not Marvin Harrison, Marvin Jones, like the oldest wide receiver in the entire NFL last year. Yes. He was 34. I think he was you the oldest I mean? player in the yeah, NFL that right. wasn't Aaron Rodgers and, and, and Matt Stafford. Right. That, maybe that was yeah, the Yeah, I think he was third oldest player in the league last this year. This is not a – this is a totally a young man's game. So, Maybe yeah, I mean, Vaughn Miller, yeah, no Vaughn. doubt. Taylor Decker, uh, absolutely. I, th I think you do draft an offensive lineman, absolutely. We'll see. We'll yeah. see and then how two, the chips fall. Yep. And then, too, you guys aren't playing as long anymore because we talked about this. Talked In about the first round, I should how, how young guys are starting, how the kids are starting now at 10 years old going to camps, 9 years old, 11 years old, 12 years old. So you're starting to see the retirement age happen earlier and earlier and earlier. Uh, I had something to ask about that as it relates to baseball, but I'll save it for when we talk about it. Let me say to I'm on St. Calvin Sanders. He says, please I talk wings. Names. Biggest game against Montreal since 11-1 Roy game. 
Wa game. Uh, Did he miss the first 30 minutes of the show? The first 30 minutes of the show is about the wings. You can rewind it. We even had Ken Daniels on for about 15 minutes, play-by-play voice on television for Valley Sports yeah. Detroit. Ken Daniels joined us, uh, joined us 15 minutes into the show. So the first 30 minutes, uh, I'm on all Red Wings. There Sorry you go. Enough. Back it up. Love we'll that name and love too. those players, though. I'm on Ross St. Brown, Calvin Johnson, Barry Sanders. Hell of a name. Hey, Jared Goff uh, spoke to the media today. And oh, uh, this soundbite, courtesy of our good friend Eric Woodyard from ESPN. And we know that it's going to be it's going to be harder. People are going to be young for us, and um, you know it's going to be hard to first defend our division title. That's number one, and then see where we can go from there. But yeah, absolutely, um, hold that trophy at the end of the year. Only one team gets to do it, and, and that's our goal. Do you vocalize it though? I mean, did you talk yeah. about it yesterday? Yeah. Did we talk about it yesterday? Um, no, we didn't really have like that setting to do that, but um, that time will come. Absolutely. From the time you stepped foot out here in the um, building in 21, how do you feel that you're a better starting quarterback for the last couple That's years? That's a great question. Um, a ton of ways. I think um, Dan and Ben and everyone up there have, have really empowered me to um, make it my own and, and be a big part of um, what we're doing and um, relying on me, asking me questions, listening to me. And, and those things allow me to kind of be more comfortable and, and settle in and um, obviously that first year here was was a struggle but since then we've had um, decent success and only expected to go more and more you know our, our standards continue to rise our expectations continue to rise but to answer your question I've, I've grown mentally physically um, emotionally spiritually all that and um, feel very comfortable you see the difference when they're on those podcasts versus when they're in front right. of the media in Detroit. Much different to him, much different guy. I like it, though. You know, he's admitting, hey, look, man, I came here. I've taken some strides in these different directions. He gets in front of that podium, and he talks like the guy that you can trust, and he talks like leader of the team, which he is, Jared Goff, that be. So I'm excited to see what this year brings. I don't care about the extension. I don't care about the contract. I don't care how they work that thing out. I'm excited to see what this year can bring because he's gotten better each year the last two years. He should have been a pro bowler both those years. And now, what are you going to do this year? You got two wins under your belt. Both of them are home. You beat Matt Stafford, the guy you essentially got traded for. You beat Baker Mayfield, who just got paid. Uh, shout out to Johnny Kim. It's Friday night. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with, with Jared Goff this year because I think he can be even better than he was last year. Hey, AI is a part of our life now, I guess. It's going to become a bigger part of our, our children's lives as we, it's everywhere. Uh, as we go, man. It's unbelievable. What? But the, it even knows the NFL. It thinks it does, at least. It is predicting that Aiden Hutchinson will become the Defensive Player of the Year this year. Aiden Hutchinson. What do you say? Hey, he might be because, look, y- you have now a dominant defensive tackle core in Aleem McNeil and uh, DJ Reader. And every defensive end that has made any sort of impact has that def- that that dominant defensive line. He very well could be the defensive player of the year this year because now it feels like that defensive line has helped, in my opinion. Ray, who do you think AI predicts that the MVP of the, of the league will be? Oh, think so about I, it. Oh, so I don't get a crack at the... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, a- get a crack at it. Yeah, get a crack at Hutch. Of the year. Do, no, do Hutch. I don't want to break it down. Like, at the end of the break day... Break it down. I got to see Aiden beat enough double teams. Like a lot of times we give him way too much credit. And this is I love Aiden Hudson. He's a Michigan guy, go blue. We give him too many too much credit for oh well he was triple team. Oh well he was double team and he was almost there and he had hurries. I need you to get to the quarterback because when the C guys beat double teams, then once you add somebody to the other side, whether it's James Houston, whether it's somebody in the draft, whether it's somebody already on the team, a Pascal, if you will, and then a DJ reader and then a Lee McNeil. Now he can get that 18 and a half to 19 sacks. It's going to get you MVP. But until you can beat those double teams, what, like, until you can beat those double teams, you're talking about a guy that can max out around 14 sacks. 14 sacks right. isn't going to get you MVP. Well, I mean, a uh, defensive right. player of the year. But he's, I tell you what, I got him at 14 sacks this year before That's the season started. I have him at 14. Legitly, I got him at a chance to be an all pro type guy. But when you start talking defensive player of the year, you're talking about guys that go down and it may be the best in the business. You had three more to that, and he's the defensive MVP. I give you that. Yeah. I you give know, you that. Yeah. But you got to get those. Stuff. You got to find those three. Uh, guys, let's uh, coming up here. I want to get a break in uh, where we can. We'll go. Uh, Save that question, man. Uh, yep. We'll go to Premier Pet Supply, and then we'll come back Fire and do long. a little bit more of uh, the NFL. You got it. I got plenty. And we're going to do Figa right now after an accident. People need to hire a lawyer more than any other time. 
So make Figer Law your first call. 1-800-A-WINNER. 1-800-A-WINNER. The team of trial lawyers will get you the money you deserve. It's Figer Law. All we do is win. A ton of fun, uh, it, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's haircuts for men, it's wicked awesome. The most talked about Detroit media by other Detroit media, and we love it. It's the Woodward Sports Network. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. When it comes to chicken sandwiches, I have a sleeper for you. And my mind is not a sleeper because the sandwich is legit. And that is the Chicken Shack sandwich from Shake Shack. And right now, if you go into any Shake Shack, because they're all around Metropolitan Detroit, you can get a free Shake Shack sandwich. All you have to do is, excuse me, Chicken Shack sandwich. Look, it's a tongue twister. All you got to do is use code word forward. Use code word forward. You spend $10, get those crinkly fries because they are amazing. You do that, you get a free sandwich. Why not get two for the price of one? Free Chicken Shack sandwich at Shake Shack, cold word, woo. Yes, sir. All right, back to Tom Maz, away we go. All right, I'll pose that question to you guys again. I'll start with Braylon, then I'll go to you, Ryan. AI said Aiden Hutchinson is going to be Defensive Player of the Year. Yep. Who does AI have as the league MVP? Uh, one or two people. It's either going to be CJ Stroud, who they also predicted to be in the Super Bowl this year, or Brock Purdy. Ryan, how about you? I saw it, so I can't say. All right, but would you have guessed that guy? Yes. C.J. Stroud, yes. C.J. Stroud is AI. I didn't pick see it, by the way. To win because, MVP. Because AI, the same AI picked Lions and Texans in yes. the Super Bowl. Good point. So Good if point. that was the case, but correlation. Also, too, but if you just not look at AI and not do it that way, just look at what the Texans have done this offseason to go with what they did last year. Last year, they win a playoff game at home. They go and lose in Baltimore. But now they add Stephon Diggs. Woo. To a wide receiver core that already had Nico Collins that went over 1,200 yards. Tank Dell that was at 900 Good before here, he got in, uh, yep. injured. See what they did at the running back position. This is a team, man, that, that that's ready to have some success. So I think I would have had CJ in my scope, even if it didn't uh, get predicted. The NFL is kind of funny. Yeah. I mean, last year, who would you say would be the two worst divisions in football? In a, NFC North. NFC North. And then the AFC, AFC, uh, AFC South, I would have said. NFC South, NFC okay, North. Fair enough. But both but NFC North are always South. usually weak. My, my, my point being was that the NFC North was you would thought you right. thought was pretty weak. Correct. And uh the AFC, what's the one with uh AFC. the Texans and AFC Colts? South. AFC South. Oh. You got the Colts, rookie quarterback, Texans, rookie quarterback, a Will Levis to the Titans. Yeah. And the Jag Jaguars you thought they were. They were the favorite. You're right, they were the favorite. That was a terrible division. Now, if you look at that division and you look at the NFC North, the AFC South and the NFC North, two of the strongest divisions in football. How about that? How quick it could turn Yep. if in you do the right thing. Interested to see what the Colts are going to do this year. Shane Steichen last year did a really good job with that offense, but now he has Anthony Richardson back. I'm eager to see. You were a, you were, you were a fourth and three away yeah, I agree. from winning the division without Anthony Richardson at, with Gardner Minshew as your quarterback. Yep. You know what I mean? What are you going to do with Anthony Richardson now? I'm excited. You know? I'm excited to see. Really yeah. interesting. Here's one that I don't think anyone in the chat's going to get. AI has this team. I hate AI, by the way. As the worst. Not Allen Iverson. But. The worst record in the league belongs <laughs> to this team. Do. And it's the Dallas Cowboys because Pete spoiled the surprise. <laughs> Dallas is going to win 10, 11 games like they do every year. Pete! 
Why'd you spoil my surprise? I love spoiling surprises. Anyway, yeah, I, they picked the Cowboys as the worst. Listen, I don't think the Cowboys will have the worst record, but the Cowboys won't be above 500 team. They're not going to be above 500 team this year. I think this year they go 8-9. Maz, you can say what you You're want. Crazy. So can you write? I'm not crazy, and this is why SHIT is starting to hit the fan down there in Dallas. Michael Parsons and his uh, podcast that he does yeah, has rubbed his... Let me finish. He's rubbed all his teammates, not all of them, rubbed a lot of them the wrong way. He's gotten to it with Dexter Lawrence on the opposite side of uh, Demarcus Lawrence, excuse me, on the opposite side of him. This is supposed to be his guy. These guys are getting into it. He's calling out his coaches, two of them no longer there. And then also, you got Dak Prescott. None of the offense rocks with Dak Prescott. None of the offense likes Dak Prescott in terms of how he conducts his business, in terms of how he keeps coming up short. You can say what you want to about what the what the um what the perception is on TV. They are imploding down there in Dallas. And you know they do not have that owner that when they implode, they can handle it. Because Jerry Jones does not do a good job of chaos. In fact, he creates all this chaos. I'm telling you. I think this is the year. It'll, and now Trayvon Diggs is also popping off. Uh, to it. 8-9. Book it. All right. Here's one for you guys. I like the bold take. 8-9. Book it. I haven't heard of this April, guy. by the way. I'm but not, you're going to hear it. about him for the draft. <laughs> have you heard of... University of British Columbia, offensive tackle, Giovanni Manu. Have you heard of him? I've not heard of him. He is six yeah, foot eight, the University of 352 Columbia. pounds. Take a look at the calendar that Giovanni Manu had to go. This was his dra- pre draft visits. Wow. And the Lions are on that list from a couple of days ago. Absolutely. Do you hear the size wow. of this man? Giants, six, Jets. 6'8", 352. Patriots, Browns, Bengals, Indianapolis, Detroit, Green Bay, Kansas City, and Denver. You know, wow. the great thing about that is none of those flights are really long. If you look at like the, how they slated them, they're all around the same area. He's got New York. He's got New York. He's got New Jersey. I mean, he's got uh, Boston. New England. There you go, Boston. Ohio. Ohio, Ohio, Indianapolis, Detroit. He only went, one is he Green, Green Bay. The, he went through the East and the Central. Yeah. Until he got to go to the Chiefs and Broncos. That's awesome. a hell of a schedule, though. Like, Brian, what do you have left for interviews after? Like, what do you have left? Like, I, listen, when I did, when I went through that process, I had one, two, three. I think I had the San Francisco 49ers, I had the Minnesota Vikings, the Bears, the Titans. I had four. And then I had one team come in. But my schedule was one a week, and I had two, and then I had another one. That many back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Like, what do you have left? Like, you're just on autopilot at that point. It's tough. crazy. I, I just like the size of this guy. A six oh, foot whoa. eight offensive lineman. Wow. Oh, come on, man. Give me, give me that all day long. I'll, I'll work with him if he's a project. It's like the Undertaker, Kane in the WWE. He's. You, they can move. Oh, Bring him here. It? Bring him to Detroit. Round two. Bring him to Detroit. Right. The Here Detroit Tigers won, man. Yeah, did they the did. the Tigers win? Tigers four won 4-2. Two. Two. All right. How about that? Can I? Uh, quick Sounds like a good vote. outing from Casey Mize, maybe. You can save this tape right now, okay? Tigers fans are not going to like it. Kansas City Royals are going to win the division. Okay. Kansas City Royals are going to win this division. That's some good baseball. Man, it, it is. They, they, are, they are a really good team, and they have... Um, I just, the Royals, man. They did a lot of work in the offseason. They season. did. The Royals are pretty darn good. They just scared by the Tigers. I don't know if it's they're like, for real, though. They're 11 and 6. I mean, Same uh, with the Tigers. The Cleveland Tigers scored a run on accident. Cleveland 11 and 5. Kansas City 11 and 6. Detroit 10 and 7. The Tigers, have, their offense has to get going. Did Javi hit another home run today? I did don't think he did, no. I thought I, Braylon said, oh, Javi. He, 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 it might have been a warning track. Warning oh, track. Okay. Warning anyway, track. Tigers got to hit the ball. They can't rely on, on giving up two runs every single game or less. This is one of they my lost big... one nothing. And they time. scored two in the bottom of the eighth today on yeah. a couple of really, Oops. like, shaky, not solid base hits. But fine. Hey, all, all the it same takes. thing he did against Minnesota yeah. a couple games ago. They're mm-hmm. one and one with the Rangers, the world champs. Two more day games to finish out. Rangers 9-9 nine and nine to start the year. Yeah. Got it. Hey, it's not who you play, World it's when you play them. Not World who you series. play, but when you play them. Here we go. I got some more stuff for you. Rasheed Rice and Theodore Knox. Those are the two guys that got in that, that car chase and they left their cars behind. Well, they're getting sued by two different people now, two different families, a million dollars each. They're just literally going after these guys now. Right. For, I don't know, probably very minor injuries. 
settle you for settle with you for five hundred thousand. I mean, less, less, less. Because if you go to court, like, you, give me a hundred thousand dollars, one hundred percent. You know, a little 100%. fender bender. But see, and, uh, I got my, I got my shoulder, oh, my shoulder, oh, my shoulder. Ah, oh, my see, shoulder. But see, this give is a hundred thousand dollars. Hey, look, this is the difference between staying at, staying at the scene of what happened, sitting there talking to individuals. Look, you may have had some in your system, may have come back to bite you in the butt. But maybe you wouldn't have had this lawsuit. You would come back, you talk to those guys. They'd be like, oh, man, are you okay? Are you okay? You stay. People don't think like that. But when you run away from the scene of a crime, and then when social media gets a hold of it in the news house, other analysts, now we blow it out of proportion. And now the victims are like, I mean, I know I only have a little bit of a tweak in my neck, but they're making it seem like I should. One million dollars. Mm-hmm. This is what happens when you leave. If you stay, you might have talked this out on the scene of the crime. Remember I asked you guys if Javi hit a home run? The chat told me he got a walk. Almost like a home run for him. <laughs> it's the only way he can get on base. He doesn't take pitches. Did Dude. you did you see his OPS is three? Yeah. Like like three. No. Like twenty per, twenty is horrible. Twenty is is three. Going into the game today, his OPS was three. Ryan, he's mine. so bad, man. I don't even know. How do you get paid one hundred sixty eight million hey, for a three OPS? How do you, how do you get so? How, well, you know, you could suck, okay? Just three, just lost it. but how do you go from so good to so bad? Like two ends of the spectrum. Not even like you know, kind of like in the middle. It's three just three OPS. Dang! After fifteen games, crazy. I'm All not right. in the MLB, but. <laughs> Dang, I could be with a Damn. three. I can hit the ball a couple times. Damn. Here we go. More <laughs> NFL for you. Uh, I should have said this when Russ was on before with us, Russell Brown. He talked about Michael Penix lasting to the second or third round. He did say that. He said day two, I think. The word on the street is, at least ML Football put it out, rumors getting louder that the Raiders are thinking of Michael Penix at number 13 overall. So this is interesting because Michael Penix has not getting a t- gotten a ton of love in this draft cycle, and he had a bad playoff. Not forget about the playoff though; it goes back to the injuries. I think at Indiana, didn't he have two season-ending injuries at a- Indiana? Tore his ACL. Not one, but two. Tore his ACL, and I think he tore his. Eight. I think he tore his. He was one, two. Tore his ACL, then set out, then went to Washington. So that I'll, is the only yeah. reason teams are yeah, shaky I mean. on him. It is the injuries at Indiana. Now, they were at Indiana. He ultimately played two clean years at Washington. Almost and, Ohio oh, State by the year. way, uh, played two pretty darn good years at, at Washington, reviving a, a, a program that was dead for 30 years. Yep. He, got him in the, he got him in the Big Ten, basically. <laughs> essentially. Yeah. Don't forget about Jake Brown. Jake Browning. Oh yeah, well, he snuck it like I fight. said, revived yeah. a program. <laughs> there you go. Thirty years, maybe they had a, a good year here yeah. and there, but um, he got that coach to Alabama. He did, Kalen DeBoer, or whatever yeah. his yeah. name is. True. You know, he did a lot of good. He's a very talented quarterback. I, Michael Penix. You know what I think is going to be the down, not downfall, but I think what people are looking at is Mac Jones. I think Mac Jones is going to be the quarterback that now when you're in these systems where you have wide receivers, when you have running backs, offensive linemen that are all going in the first round or they have pretty good chances to go in the first three rounds, they're starting to vet that process. Mac Jones got drafted off Mm. the basis of uh, insert wide receiver here, John Mechie, uh, Jamison Williams, uh, 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 Devontae Smith. You look at these wide receivers, the running back, Josh Jacobs, who's now with the Minnesota Vikings, or Green Bay Packers, excuse me. This is how Mac Jones became the number one pick or for the Patriots that year. Michael Penix had a similar system. He had three wide receivers, two going in the second and third round. He had a really good running back, and we know Rome Adunaze. So I think that's what you're starting to see. We don't want to pick a guy based on what his counterparts were or his, uh, his uh, parts were. Hey, we're going right. to talk Michigan spring game and look ahead to that starting tomorrow, but there's a story that came out today that – Remember the whole the hubba baloo uh, for the COVID-19? Well, Michigan got they got uh, three years probation for, for the them. COVID-19 dead period violation. Oh, isn't that something? All right, so there you go. National, that chapter's over. Now. National champs. I mean, what is was, that the, was that the cheeseburger? Uh, that was the practice Zoom call, stuff. I think. The Zoom, the Zoom practice. Non-contact. 
non-contact Zoom practice where Jim Harbaugh was doing push-ups on the Zoom with players on the Zoom in other areas. On the Zoom. <laughs> on the Zoom. So they get three years probe. Cheeseburger. Patient. Thirteen dollars. Yeah, cheeseburger gate. They get a perhaps. fine. They get recruiting restrictions. Oh my god! In alignment with the level one mitigated classifications of the school. Isn't that great? Uh, Thank you, you NCAA, for your graciousness. There's, why does this feel re- like a? Uh, why does it feel like a slap on the wrist for like a hedge fund? Like well, by the SEC. I mean, <laughs> remember, this the was SEC? like the big, like this was the biggest story. Oh, you're yeah. cheaters. Well, and- the big one came out. You know, they haven't hit us yet. Haven't hit Michigan yet for the sign stealing yet so we'll see how that came out we'll see national how this champs. one we'll see how this one you. came out yep they won the national all champs. you can do is what you can do uh guys where are you watching the game tonight anything special oh i'm locked and loaded i got base i got softball practice this afternoon with the girls, girls with the girls we have our first game tomorrow although it'll probably be rained out oh and then i'm heading home eating some dinner and watching the red wings i'm locked in man uh, I'm going back and forth between the Red Wings and the uh, play-in. Look, play-in starts tonight, and I know what you're talking about. The Red Wings are more important. That play-in tournament has gotten pretty I, – I, they are. No, I'm with the you, Red Wings. The, the play-in watching. tournament has been pretty good the last couple of years. You see the Warriors two years ago. You see Lakers last year. So uh, count me down for a little bit of back and forth. Just All to right. refresh everyone's memory, free money is tonight on the Lakers-Utah <laughs> Jazz game. Free money. Pelicans, excuse me. New yep. Orleans Pelicans. New Orleans Pelicans. If the Lakers win this game, which they won't, they will have to face the number seven seed. Denver Nuggets. Denver Nuggets, who they can't beat. If they lose this game, they will play the survivor of game two between the Warriors and the Kings. Yes, Sacramento. Now, Ryan gave you this stat. Just two nights ago, the Lakers basically beat the Pelicans, you know what? They beat it by was, 20. And mind you, it was a 124-108 game, but they were up by 30 most yes. of the game. And they then at the end, it got closer. So the Lakers won by almost 20, up by 30. And tonight's spread. Pelicans by one. Pelicans are favored by one. If you're a gambler, there's your free have a good there's your night. free dollar. Enjoy yourself. There's your free dollar, Jack. All right, guys. Uh, we're gonna get out of here. Bray, send it in. Another great show. We're getting some topics to talk about. It looks like sports are starting to heat up. NHL playoffs right around the corner. The NBA playoffs start today. Yes, the play-in is a playoff game. And oh, by the way, the Detroit Tigers are 10 and 7. When's the last time that's happened? We appreciate you guys for tuning in. As always, we are Armani Network with Maz. And don't forget about Peace Spivek as well as my man Silent Mike. Do a hell of a time every show. We'll see you guys tomorrow. See you guys. Pause.